Good afternoon, everyone who is joining us by way of uh, virtual launching this afternoon. Uh, we would like to take this opportunity to welcome all of our participants who are joining us here online across many continents. We are so grateful to have you all. And it's such a privilege that you are joining us here to launch the NPP USA member management system. Uh, before we proceed, just a few house items that we just want to take note of. Uh, we would encourage each and every one of our participants here to please do the best you can to mute yourself if you need to have a conversation on the background while you are with us. That way we are not interrupting speakers who would have the opportunity to talk to us tonight or this afternoon, wherever you may be. I will be moderator with Kofi Tonto and also Josephine Ajakum. Uh, in between this moderation, uh, we would ask that if you have any question, please you may hold that until we actually get to our Q&A session so that we can give you that opportunity to ask questions that you may have. So as we begin with our virtual launching of our member management system this afternoon or tonight, wherever you are, we once again would like to thank all of our participants from Canada, from the UK, Australia, wherever you are joining us, we just want you to know that we're grateful that you're part of us. We're gonna have a couple of dignitaries you know, here tonight with us. His Excellency, Dr. Laj Mahmoud Baumia, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana is gonna be our keynote speaker. We're gonna also have Joe Anoche as our guest you know, speaker as well. The General Secretary of NPP is gonna be joining us. Also a couple of ministers, MMDCs, various you know, party functionaries would all be joining us this afternoon to have a very great conversation. So we would like you to please work with us. The program duration is gonna be three hours uh, from this point forward until uh, 6 uh, p.m. If you're on East Coast you know, time, uh, it'll be three hours as I indicated. So please work with us as we are beginning with this you know, uh, process. Uh, so to continue where I left off, as I indicated, uh, between the three of us, myself, Kofi Tonto, and Ms. Josephine, we will be alternating to moderate this you know, program. And if you have any question, please, we ask that you, again, as I indicated, bear with us so you can ask when we have that opportunity for Q&A. Uh, so without much, you know, as I do, We'd like to begin uh, with an open prayer. Our brother, Abala Saeed, who is uh, on the line at this point, will call upon him to give us an open prayer before we start with our program tonight. So, Bala, 
Yes. Uh, can you please lead us into an open prayer? Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thanks uh, for joining this important program. And before we begin, we need to uh, say a prayer to ask for God's guidance and wisdom to be able to have a successful meeting. On this note, we ask God on this day, the first day of Ramadan, that we had witness, we pray that this become a successful event. So, Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Rahmani Rahim, Maliki Yomidin, Yaka Nabudu, Yaka Nastain, Idina Surat al Mustakim, Surat al Lazin and Amt Alayhim, Gayr al Makdubi Alayhim, Wal Dali. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Bala Saeed, for giving us the opening prayer. As we move along on our agenda for this afternoon's uh, program, we would like to um, sing our national anthem. Uh, there will be two versions, uh, the Ghanaian National Anthem and also the party anthem as well. And this is going to be a collective effort from all of us. So wherever you are joining us, please brace for us to Mr. Kwanza and Kofi, I think we would uh, start with the national anthem of uh, Ghana first, and then we will uh, deal with the uh, party. So, uh, without much as I do, I call on all of us to wherever you are, you can either stand on your feet as we pay homage to our dear country by singing the national anthem. God bless our homeland yeah. mm -hmm. and make yeah. our peace Oh, to defend for all Thank you, everyone, for helping us, you know, to sing the national anthem. I know next time who not to call to join us when we have to sing this anthem. Uh, so as we move forward, uh, we would like to sing the anthem for the party, the new patriotic, you know, party anthem. And I think uh, uh, Madam Chair usually do a great, you know, work when she lead us in this particular, you know, area. I can see her uh, on the screen now. So I think uh, we will follow her lead, Madam Chair, as we sing, you know, our anthem for the new patriotic, you know, party. <laughs> Oh, 
And let's all move in unison. It looks like somebody is starting, somebody is beginning. So let's all start at the same time, please. Okay, one, two, three. We are new. 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 We have won. 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 We have Thank you, everyone, for joining the anthem. Brilliant. We're so grateful once again, as Madam Chair, you know, declared. Um, would like, you know, to uh, move, you know, forward, uh, seeing that we have a couple of our dignitaries who are already here with us. Uh, just want to take a few moments here to recognize or acknowledge each one that I see on the screen at this, you know, particular, you know, moment. And I'm um, hoping that as the rest continue to you know, come on board as well, we would uh, duly acknowledge them as well. Uh, I see that uh, we have uh, our MD for the state housing, you know, company, uh, Mr. Kovnap here. Uh, we usually call him, uh, or he's popularly known as Virus, who is actually on here with us tonight. We say thank you very much and you're welcome, sir. Uh, I also, you know, uh, take notice of uh, Mr. Evans Nimakon, who is a party director of research and communication and then also elections, who actually, I'm sorry, uh, director of uh, uh, elections, uh, who is also a research, who is here with us as well. Uh, Mr. Evans Nimakon, we duly welcome and recognize your presence, you know, here with us tonight. Uh, this afternoon, you. wherever you may be. Thank you. Um, as I uh, looked around, I have not, you know, seen other dignitaries that we have invited who have joined us so far yet. But as I indicated, we would be acknowledging each one as they, you know, join us. Uh, but I want to take this moment to once again thank each one of us, uh, our participants, you know, who are here. Uh, for one and, you know, only, you know, purpose, which this afternoon or tonight, wherever you are joining us from, uh, to talk about the importance of technology and making technology, you know, work for us. Uh, I also have just been uh, informed that our Consul General of New York, Mr. Atabuafo, Honorable Atabuafo, is also with us tonight as well. Honorable, we do welcome you also tonight. Uh, as I rightly indicated, I also wanted to uh, keep all of us, you know, informed. Earlier, I had mentioned this. 
uh, I think that uh, for us to have a very successful you know, program, it is gonna be important for us to do the best we can to be less disruptive of uh, this afternoon's you know, program. So please, uh, if you can help us you know, to either put your phones on silent, and we know you have other important you know, things to attend to as well while you're here, but we uh, respectfully ask you that you could please uh, silence your phones uh, while we're actually here at this particular moment so we can be less disruptive of our, our program you know, this afternoon. Um, so once again, thank you, uh, every single uh, one of us you know, who are here tonight to ensure that uh, we are moving along as you know, we uh, anticipate. I think I, I did indicate it also that it's going to take us uh, about three hours you know, to cover this you know, program. And, um, we have various speakers who would be taking us, you know, through all uh, uh, the rest of the programs, you know, here. And our main icing on the cake would be His Excellency, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, uh, Vice President, who would be a keynote, you know, speaker. So uh, we ask that you hang up, you know, out here with us as long as, you know, the time allows you, which we would love for you to be here with us until the end of the program. But if you feel the need and the duty to have to be somewhere else, we do understand and we would definitely you know, appreciate the time you have spent you know, with us before you have to join other programs as well. Uh, so at uh, this point, we are gonna be talking about the rationale, the reason why we are here this particular you know, juncture. Uh, and we have no less of a person than our uh, General Secretary of, uh, of NPP USA, Mr. O Augustine Agbenezer, who is actually going to do us, you know, the honor to uh, tell us why we're here uh, tonight, and also help us, you know, to understand the importance of, for which, you know, reason we have, you know, uh, gathered, you know, here uh, to all be participants to ensure that uh, we can continue to do the best uh, for not only our party, but also to replicate what we're about to witness, you know, this afternoon here, also, you know, uh, in, our, in our country as well, because we believe that uh, by far, as we always say, the NPP is the best party, political party. There's no question about that whatsoever. And whatever we do, we are always the pace setters and others tend to learn from us. And that is what we're supposed to do, to continue to be that lead where we can always set you know, the pace and ensure that other, others follows and also continue to benefit so that collectively as a country, we can all reap the benefit for what the NPP always you know, feel is important to introduce you know, to the political uh, scene. So without much as I do, I will call on Mr. Augustine Agbenezer, the General Secretary for the NPP USA branch to uh, give us uh, the reason why we're here tonight. General, we recognize you duly. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Good afternoon to those in the United States of America, and good evening to those in Ghana. Uh, as we are all aware, NPT USA is the largest branch within the party NPP. And NPP USA is scattered all over the United States of America, as represented by the 25 chapters that are currently within the branch. Most often, with the way MPP USA is scattered all over the United States, at times it's difficult to reach many of the members at the same time. With that difficulty recognized, the branch executive decided to look for a way that will make it 
possible for the branch to manage its members and the activities of the branch in a more efficient manner. And technology has offered us that opportunity. So the branch has developed a member management system that we are about to launch to help it to do things in a more efficient and better way than before. We are leveraging technology to help us reach the highest height in the management of our members and the branch. So we are here this afternoon and this evening to launch the member management system that our IT team has developed for us. The management system is just a collection of tools and features on a singular platform that we can use to manage the branch and the members more efficiently. Some of these include a databases like the email addresses of members and their phone numbers, uh, a payment processing, member databases, and features like a digital membership card that could be sent to every member as soon as they pay their dues. And I'm sure the demonstration will elaborate more on the features and the tools. So I will not go into those areas. It will offer us opportunity to be able to communicate in a more efficient way with our members. Currently, we send information through structures of the branch to the members. And it has been the realization that the information do not reach the members at all or not early. But this system will allow us, since we have the phone numbers and the email addresses in databases of all our members, it will allow us to communicate more efficiently with all our members. Either to communicate with everybody at the same time or to a subgroup of the membership or the branch when needed. Hopefully, this system that we are launching today that has brought all of us together it's a one shop, a one play shop that would uh, help the branch to be more efficient in its activities. And if this system should be used by the mother party, maybe we could see an end to the violence that takes place during internal contests, internal elections. Since the party will know its members and there will be no difficulty as happens now in determining the albums of the various constituencies. To conclude, we are here to launch the member management system that the branch has developed that will make it to manage the branch more efficiently. Thank you. Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much, Mr. Augustine Abenezer, our General Secretary of MPP USA. 
I, this particular moment, would like to acknowledge a few other dignitaries who have joined us, and others that will be joining us here shortly as well. Uh, we have in our midst the Honorable Akwesi Kunedu, who is the MP for Mesia North, who is in our midst at this particular moment. I also would like to acknowledge the presence of a few other media personalities who are here with us tonight. Uh, Mr. John Awuni, who is a senior reporter for Kesbin Media is with us here. We also have Mr. Michael Fusua Fiye, who is the Ashanti Regional Editor for the Ghanaian Observer newspaper as well. In addition to the various individuals, or honorable members that I've introduced, we have our Dr. Alexander Educer, who is also the MD or director for Kithaport, who is also in our midst. Uh, we do have Mr. Michael Osebwating, also uh, the Bono Ahafo regional organizer who is here uh, with us as well. Uh, we do have uh, Mr. Kobina Century, uh, who is also the director of NADMO in Ashanti region with us. The Honorable Sam Pine, the mayor of Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly is also joining us here tonight as well. And the Honorable Frank Ano Dompre, who is the member of parliament for Nsawam Adojiri and the majority chief whip also here with us as well. So I would be continuing to update the house as we do have uh, the members joining us uh, in due time as well. On this particular note, I would like to switch for a moment here and allow our co-moderator, Mr. Kofi Tonto, who will be taking over from me uh, to continue with the uh, program. So without much as I do, Mr. Tonto, we duly really welcome and recognize you to take us through the rest of the program as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Ima, I'm, I'm exceptionally grateful uh, for the introduction. Uh, we, we do have uh, the people uh, that I would like to acknowledge, especially from the media space. Uh, we have our own from uh, Wound to Me, Ohineba Nana Asidu from Wound to Me. And then we also have the online editor of Wound to Me, Abuaji Frank Jackson. They are both online uh, currently with us. Uh, we also have um, Nanette J. Yabua, who used to be the former MPP USA chairperson. Uh, he's also with us this evening or afternoon or morning, uh, wherever you are. And then we also have Ama Frempoma Juma, who's also here with us this evening. Um, as time goes on, I will make uh, the effort to introduce other people and to say hi to them. But at this juncture, I would like to introduce uh, no less of a person than the chairperson of MPP USA. I think most of us know who she is. She's an extremely hardworking woman. Uh, let me also do this. We have uh, Yao Esrifi of MPP Canada, MPP Canada organizer here on, 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 on Zoom with us. We also have Abim Kelvin Ann, who's a PhD student uh, at uh, American University in Beirut, Lebanon. He's also with us. We do acknowledge all of them. If you are on with us and you would like for us to acknowledge you, kindly message us and we'll do so. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, we'll make all the effort to recognize everyone, especially um, leadership who join us. But let me go back to uh, Obaya, who is currently the chairperson of MPP USA. 
and the first one to be the chairperson of the branch. Uh, Obaya Frimpon, uh, I would like to introduce you to give us a speech uh, for about five minutes. So Mr. IT, if you could switch over to Obaya Frimpon, I'll be grateful. Okay, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm delighted to see each and every one of you this uh, afternoon or evening uh, joining us uh, for this Zoom launch of our member management system. Dab this launch as making technology work for us making technology work for us. And I think our keynote speaker, who is in the person of uh, the Vice President of the Republic, Dr. Mohamed Abaumia will touch more on that. But as a branch, we have seen firsthand how technology has helped us uh, in terms of the work we do, considering how spread out we are across various states uh, in the US of A. And so it is wise and incumbent on us that we have a system that is able to bring all of us together regardless of wherever we are so that we can have a better party to run and a better administration and a more accountable uh, party. Uh, I'll read my, my, my speech for this evening. Uh, His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic, who is also our keynote speaker, our guest speaker, Mr. Joe Anoche of NCA, our former branch chairperson, in the person of Naneje Yabwa, now the uh, CEO of Students Loan in Ghana, the General Secretary of our dear party, Mr. John Boadu, Director of International Affairs, Mr. Emmanuel Atifa Danso, Director of Elections and Research, Mr. Iman, Mr. Evans Nimako, who is also here, members of parliament who have joined us, other government appointees and dignitaries, members from our sister parties across the continent. Uh, I see Canada, second vice chairman of Canada, uh, Ms. Victoria Echampon also here, Mr. Yawasifi, the organizer of the Canada branch also here with us. Our, my colleague chairpersons across all our 25 chapters who are also present tonight, our branch officers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of MPP USA and as the host of today's luncheon, I would like to express my most and sincere gratitude to the Office of the Vice President for their presence and all participants across all continents and across all our chapters who are here this afternoon and this evening to join us for the launch of our member management system. MPP uh, USA, uh, we are excited that we are launching this member management system that we've, uh, we've been talking about and planning to get this rolling for quite some time now. Uh, for, and this is the first time in the history of our branch that we are putting together such a system to manage the things we do. And I'm glad that we are taking this giant step to forestall or to make sure we solidify the use of technology in the way we conduct our business. The journey of digitization in MPP USA officially began in 2009 as a model to test the resilience of our electra, internal electoral system and to afford us the opportunity to roll out such system on a large scale to promote future success of elections in the party. It is, the, it is with the right step and a bold decision made by the leadership of MPP USA at the time 
led by Dr. Kofi Boateng to not succumb and to our belief that technology uh, would, would in effect become, uh, but will in effect become a transformational tool to advance the work of politics and everyday life. While the idea re-envisioned by the leadership was a laudable one, it was not without resistance in many ways, but for many visionaries who knew what the power of technology could unleash, understood the vision and began to gradually work, uh, work with us. Today, the effect of the technology continues to define and shape our lives. It was therefore no coincidence that in the end, in coincidence that in 2012, MPP USA founded a digital election collation system as a solution to help in the parallel collation of our 2012 elections, led by the then chairman, chairman Nana Ejeyeboa with uh, Mr. Ogesimbley as the director of IT. Unfortunately, the system was not fully recognized by the mother party during the general election, which we lost. In 2014, the branch triggered the use of the uh, technology again in our electoral system. The digital effort triumphed over the internal resistance with a more improved system than the one used in 2019. We continue to perfect the system for a more robust program. And in 2018, the resilience of the branch itself was tested and we uh, was tested and was met with a fierce resistance by some of uh, our members on the use of digital solution platform for conducting elections and even threatened, uh, of threatened court action and extreme verbal insults. We, we persevered and kept our composure to provide, to provide the membership of the branch, uh, the branch with a solution to minimize internal wranglings within the party. And with a clear strategic plan to not only use technology for our elections, but to expand it to, man to the management of the entire database of the branch, incorporating dues payment, ensure effectiveness, efficiency, integrity, transparency in the party administration and management. Today, with our collective resolve and the political will to ensure that we make technology work for our good, we have been able to establish a system that ensures data integrity, efficiency in the management of our party and branch. As I've said in many platforms, I have had an opportunity to engage uh, before the transition of technology and how that has helped in our work. To continue to make progress with the use of technology as a party, we all need to keep listening and keep learning and importantly, to take action. As MPP USA, we are determined and look forward to the findings of the latest technology, which we can offer uh, our numerous members the solutions to conduct affairs in our party for a peaceful and a rewarding elections. MPP USA and its leadership team are going to be listening and learning because we understand that technology, like anything else, needs to constantly evolve, meeting changing needs and challenges. I'm optimistic that all participants who have had a privilege to join us for this luncheon will encourage the leadership of our mother party and our respective branches, regions, constituencies, electoral area and polling station to take action, to take a active part in the interest, uh, interesting discussion to implement the use of member management system and technology in the conduct of affairs of our party to prevent many unpleasant scenes as we have observed in many elections across our country. In closing, I'm very grateful and thankful to MPP USA and our IT team led by Mr. Uh, Joseph Ebo Kansa for their diligent work in setting up this member management system for all our use and our benefit. 
And thank you for the support that we have garnered from our chapters, our chapter chairs in making this thing work. On behalf of the leadership of MPP USA, I wish each and every one of you a good, a good afternoon, good evening, and please enjoy as at some point in time, we'll get a chance to demonstrate the system that we have been able to put together to manage the internal affairs of MPP USA. And I will also at this juncture, uh, give my former chairman, uh, Chairman Aneje Yeboa, some time to also add to some of the things that I've said, because some of these initiatives, uh, technological initiative was also done uh, at his time that he can also share a word or two with us. Thank you very much. God bless the new patriotic party. God bless our homeland Ghana and God bless MPP USA. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson Obaya Frempon for the excellent and succinct uh, uh, summary of the contributions of MPP USA towards our great party. Uh, we are extremely grateful for, for your time. Let me also use the opportunity to introduce a few people or to uh, acknowledge a few people who have joined us tonight. We have Mr. Abubakar Abdullah, Director, Ghana Standard, Standards Authority. Uh, we also have uh, one of our friends, Dr. Samuel Amposan, who is the former branch secretary, MPP Japan. Um, we also have a few other people that I would like to acknowledge. Um, one second. We have Salam Mustafa, who is the director of operations at the vice president's office and also an aspirant for the national youth uh, position. Uh, we also have a few other people that I would like to acknowledge. I have several here, I'm trying to get everyone. We have Dr. Samuel Frempon, University of Missouri, head of the School of Mine. We also have MPP Italy branch secretary who has also joined us. We have um, Alhaji, Mauzu, Isaka, Unata, National Youth Wing Operations Director and aspirant for National Nasara Coordinator. Uh, we have more people, but we'll move on to the next section. And then once we come back, we'll take time to acknowledge everyone else. Um, one more person, Otuo Echampon, MPP UK Branch Secretary. Thank you also for joining. Now at this point, we'll move on to our next section. We have a section for the party, the general secretary of our party, uh, the Honorable John Buedu uh, to speak to us. I'm not sure if uh, our general secretary is on the line, but do we have a representative from the party to speak to us? If we do, uh, kindly let us know so we can make room for you to speak to, to, to us this evening. Uh, so a representative from our great party to speak to us at this point. So Mr. Bokwansa, if you can, I, I think we have um, our director, Ivan Simako, director of elections. I'm not sure if he will be the one speaking on behalf of the general secretary. Um, if he is, kindly go ahead for us, please. Okay. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, uh, Director, Mr. please Mr. go ahead. Yes, uh, good evening from Ghana and good afternoon to you all. I don't think I now have the full powers to speak on behalf of the General Secretary. So I'll wait and get him to give you a speech. And then later, if I have to make a contribution, then I'll come through with it. Thank you very much.
Uh, uh, Director, do you know if the General Secretary will be joining us this evening? Please let me cross check and get back to you. Thank you. Okay, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Um, we'll proceed and then uh, come back once you confirm, uh, we'll come back to the party. So at this point, we'll go ahead and proceed. But before that, we have some CEOs who have joined us uh, this evening. We have our CEO, Mr. or Honorable Abed Adubwahin, MD Metro Mass, who has joined us this evening. We also have another CEO who is the Director General, um, Dr. Collins Yabua Aferi. And we, he's the Director General, Ghana India Kofi Annan Center of Excellence in ICT. We've also been joined by our brother uh, and communicator, Honorable Hobson Adoye. We also have my own sister, Hajia Frempoma from NLA Good Causes Foundation, who has also joined us this evening. Um, I think uh, Oba is this this event is quickly turning into an all-star game. Uh, so we are very, very grateful for everyone to join us. At this point, we will allow uh, Honorable Ajay Abua, who used to be the former chairperson of MPP USA, to speak to us very briefly, and then we'll continue from there. So Honorable Ajay Yabua, uh, you do have the floor, sir. Yeah, thank you, Kofi. Uh, good evening from Ghana, and uh, good afternoon uh, to you uh, in the USA. Uh, Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, Abaya from Pong. And uh, I commend you for the great job that you, you are doing and you continue to do. Uh, I would just give a brief synopsis. Uh, what I'm going to say, because I know that uh, Mr. Joe Anoshi is going to talk about the journey of the digitization uh, of the party. And uh, Mr. Joe Anoche uh, was there from the beginning. So he knows the journey and I believe uh, he's going to give details about how we've traveled uh, from the beginning to this point. It's exciting to see that uh, we continue to build upon uh, our you know, digital processes. Uh, why, when I was the chairman, I set up a robust IT team, as Obaya mentioned, uh, that Mr. Augustine Bray was the director of IT, assisted by our own uh, Mr. Joe Anoche. And uh, we s came up with a system because uh, we, we were looking at ways that we can contribute to the mother party and Ghana generally uh, about actions. Uh, we named it the Inframarkesia. I believe uh, uh, Mr. Anoshi will throw more light on that. And uh, is Obaya was my second vice, and she was in there. Uh, so it's good that uh, she's taking it uh, much further. US is uh, a, a large country. So we started the processes by doing our elections. In the, at the beginning, we had to go to Congress before we can vote. And it became very cumbersome. So we figured that it would be good to start voting uh, online. That was the beginning of the digitization process. And it has evolved uh, to this level. And like I'm saying, I'm keeping my comments briefly because uh, Ms. Joanna she is going to talk some more about it. I'm glad to be part of, a, uh, of, of this uh, Zoom conference. And um, I'm happy to know that people from all over, all the uh, most of the Senate branches are here 
a lot of uh, government appointees are also on. So I'll say kudos to Obaya and uh, the uh, and her executives. And uh, Kofi also thanks for doing very good moderation. So thank, I will end here. Thanks for giving me this platform. Uh, thank you, the Honorable Nana J. Yabua, uh, for your contribution. I'm exceptionally grateful. Let me use this opportunity to also highlight how I joined MPP USA about 12 years ago. Uh, it was right when I finished uh, university. In fact, IT played a role because then when I finished, I didn't know anyone in Massachusetts. Uh, my, my uncle Kwabunapia and I used to uh, actively participate in politics online. I'm, I'm referring to virus. But then when I finished university, I wanted to do active politics on the ground. So I went online and I searched for MPP in the US. And then uh, Honorable Nanerji Yabwe's number came up. I believe that was around 2010, late 2010. So I called him and he introduced me to MPP Massachusetts. And that's how I became a part of the MPP USA family. I first became the communications director for MPP Massachusetts and then became spokesperson for Nanerji Yabwe and on and on to Director of Communications for MPP USA. And now I'm here. So I just wanted to, Nana, it's been about 12 years now. So let me use this opportunity to say thank you for, uh, for initiating me into the MPP USA family. Uh, let me acknowledge a few CEOs. Thank we you. have uh, Honorable Justin Kodia, CEO of YEA has joined us. Uh, we are extremely grateful for your time. Let me reintroduce my sister. I wasn't sure. I didn't know the Juma, so I was a bit confused. But Amma Frimpon is my sister, uh, MD, SIC Savings and Loans. Um, uh, thank you for joining us as well. We have the new digital guru in town. Uh, Honorable Kojuba has also joined us, uh, CEO for Ghana Digital Center. Thank you for joining. We have the Honorable Patrick Seydu, Deputy CEO, Northern Development Authority. Thank you for also joining us. We are extremely grateful. We'll continue and then once we get more names, I'll take the time and acknowledge you. If, if you have my number, shoot it to me and then I'll do that. We've, I've also been informed that the uh, Managing Director for PMMC, uh, Nana Akwesi Ewa Esquire has also joined us. MD, thank you for, for joining. As I mentioned, tonight is gradually turning into an all-star game, and it shows that MPP USA is a strong entity, and we are grateful for all of you for joining us this evening. At this point, let me introduce another IT person who's going to introduce another IT guru. Uh, Mr. Ebukwansa and I go way back. We've had the opportunity to work together in the past when I was a director of communications. Uh, we, we had several platforms that we were building, my team and I, um, and Mr. Ebukwansa was instrumental in helping us. So Mr. Ebukwansa, if you may do us the honors and introduce the Honorable Joe Anoche to us. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Kofi Tonto. Uh, it's, it was an honor working with you. And I'm really excited to introduce the next uh, uh, speaker, who is our guest speaker. Uh, he's my former boss, uh, who was the director of the uh, IT MPP USA. Um, he was actually instrumental in getting our name also into the National Theater uh by actually uh, coming up with uh an, an app that was able to uh actually uh, collate uh, the results of our elections near real time and that actually endeared us to uh, the election victory in 2016. Uh, since then uh, he's been a household name and uh, he's currently uh, the director general of the nca um and i'll just uh, give a, a little background of uh, of our next speaker. 
Uh, he uh, actually uh, holds a degree in geodetic engineering uh, from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and a master of uh, business administration degree uh, from the University of Maryland University College. Uh, he worked with the National Aeronautics and uh, Space Administration in the United States as a telecommunications service manager and helped with the development of platforms uh, to improve the telecommunication capabilities of organizations and uh, even countries. Uh, he also worked with the Ghana Commercial Bank, uh, Water River Authority, Ashanti Goldfields Corporation, and uh, Ghana uh, Telecom. Uh, in, in September of uh, 1997, uh, he was actually hired by NASA and was stationed at the uh, what we call the, the Godard Space Flight Center uh, with the team that managed the authority's global mission telecommunication area wide area network. He secured uh, the system for the transfer of data and uh, video uh, between vehicles, equipment, and uh, base uh, stations. Uh, he has worked with the Canadian uh, Space Agency, the Japanese Space uh, Exploration Agency, the German Space Operations Center, uh, and also collaborating to explore information transfer activities. Uh, he returned to Ghana after working with the NASA for eight years uh, in February 2000, uh, 2016 and was appointed the director of technology for the MPP, uh, MPP party. Uh, he developed the software uh, that enabled tallying of uh, election results, like I said previously, uh, from all 275 parliamentary constituencies. Uh, please well, help me welcome our guru, Mr. Joe Anoche, as he takes us through the next uh, event. Am I on? Yeah, you're on. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ebu Kwanza. It's been a while. I haven't seen you. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> I couldn't figure you out actually when I when I log on. Good to see you. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Kofi Nyame was actually my schoolmate at uh, Pukuar. We were assist for meet. He was the oh, okay. first first assistant school prefect at uh, <laughs> at Pukuar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just just a minor correction. Actually, I, I worked at NASA for nineteen years before 19. I okay. before actually joined uh, joined the campaign. Uh, His Excellency. Alaji Mahamudu Baumia, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. Mr. John Buadu, General Secretary, the New Patriotic Party, Ghana. Mrs. Obaya Amponsa Frimpong, Brian Chairperson, MPP USA. Uh, Mr. Ivans Nimakon, Director of Elections and Research, uh, MPP. Uh, Mr. Tifa Danso, Director of External Affairs. Honorable members of parliament who are online, former boss Nana J. Abua, uh, former chairman MPP USA, currently uh, CEO of Student Loan Fund, CEOs from state institutions in Ghana who have joined, executives and members of the MPP USA branch, executives and members of other diaspora branches who have joined, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. First of all, I would like to thank the great Osno family, MPP USA, for inviting me as a guest speaker for this special occasion. In November last year, I was invited by my alma mater, the School of Engineering, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, KNUST, Kumasi, as the motivational speaker for the graduating class of 2021. In my opening statement, I mentioned that it's often the dream of graduating students to imagine that one day they too will be invited as a commencement speaker mm. of the alma mater. What? Well, deja vu. <laughs> well, deja vu. I feel the same way today. Indeed, it's a privilege and honor for me to be presenting on the topic, the journey of digitization in our party so far. 
I'd like to begin with a disclaimer that my description of events here today may not capture the entire journey of the digitalization in our party to date. It's entirely possible that there are events that have taken place without my knowledge, but I'll do the best that I can. I've arranged my speech into several sessions, namely the pre-2008, what I call early ICT, uh, the 2012 uh, early formal adoption of ICT, post-2012 election petition, 2014 MPP presidential primaries, 2015, the birth of from Acacia, uh, 2016 national elections, 2020 national elections, 2021 and beyond. And I, and I have some acknowledgements that um, if you all indulge me, I'd like to make this evening. So I begin with a pre-2008, pre-2008. Really and truly, most ICT efforts relied on standalone spreadsheets on the other uh, on single computer approaches. So my, if, if I may, you know, just make sure we are on the same page. So this is not a technical speech I'm giving. It's more of a description with, with, with historical contents. So please uh, bear, bear with me. So uh, in the pre-2008, party membership registration was mostly paper-based with some work to collect membership data in spreadsheets or standalone databases in various constituencies. Election resource collation was done mostly through phone calls, faxes, physical movement of paper or storage devices. With, with scarcity of internet, SMS-based collation supported transmission by fax from constituencies. Uh, in those days, the flag bearer and the party officials were thus informed accordingly. Uh, the party used some volunteers in the last days to attempt collation of results using SMS and desktop applications. Now, uh, beginning 2008 through 2000, beginning 2000 to 2008, uh, Dr. Samoa was in charge of IT systems that ran the elections. <laughs> now let's look at 2012 early uh, formal adoption of IC. So the party formally adopted ICT to collate election results in 2012. Accordingly, a seasoned technology and management executive, Nana Jo Mensa, was appointed by the presidential campaign to lead the National Elections Coalition Unit. Though the coalition unit was generally accepted by key players in the party, it by and large operated outside the main election campaign team, which was operationally somewhat, somehow problematic. The party purchased mobile phones for each polling station across the country to be used to transmit election results on D-Day. The mobile phones were installed with an in-house built SMS-based app platform for transmitting election results. The developing team was led by Alaji Fauzi and Kwejo Osafo-Mafo. I actually joined the National Coalition team on full-time basis about three weeks to D-Day. And, and one of my first assignment was the establishment of the party's first election coalition center in Laboni. Unfortunately, the coalition platform came to a halt around about 11 p.m. or so on election nights. Resource transmission significantly reduced and came to a stop. Not a single constituency at the time had, had transmitted 100% of their polling stations. And by the following day, the election was called for the NDC by Afarijan's EC. There were a number of issues. Key among them were lack of IT support at the constituency and regional levels. Training on use of app on the phone was rushed largely because the phones arrived late. Some of the mobile phone devices and computers were not distributed at all. People actually kept them. Remember, this was 10 years ago. Use of mobile phones was not as ubiquitous as it is today. I must add that there was a parallel national, parallel to the national coalition exercise, right? Parallel to national coalition exercise, the MPP USA IT team, led by Augustine Blay, designed and built a web-based constituency coalition platform 
to supplement the polling station transmission by phone. A number of MPP USA members travel from, from the USA to Ghana to support the implementation. There were issues with implementation on the day, largely due to lack of support at the various constituencies. So post 2012 election petition, the party rely heavily on use of spreadsheets and scripting to uncover several anomalies and illegalities in the pink sheet recording and reporting. This has led to date to several important changes by EC on pink sheet recording. So let's look at 2014 MPP presidential primaries. The MPP USA team led by Augustine Blair and myself leveraged the 2012 coalition platform to report on the November presidential election. This is in November of 2014. It was hugely successful. The numbers were very accurate. The coalition center was at the late uh, Victor Newman's office in Adabraka, Accra. The MPP USA team worked with the likes of Carlos Brazi, who is now the deputy chief of staff at the presidency, uh, Honorable Amankwa, who is deputy defense minister, uh, Sam Ellis, who is also a director of, uh, at, at the presidency, and, and, and many more. In my view, this was a period of time that MPP USA, chaired by Nana Jebua, officially became the ICT powerhouse of the great Osno party. Nana, Munkaso, Munia Jumai, you did a fantastic job at, at the MPP USA. So 2015, the birth of Inframakesia. Following the successful support of the 2014 presidential primaries, four of us, namely Augustine Blay, Francis Blay, Kofi Edu, and myself, met at my private consulting training center at Greenbelt, Maryland, uh, you know, to, be, to be precise, called JMA Systems, to discuss the way forward. Our goal was to come up with a campaign and election management platform that will address key deficiencies that we had identified in the campaign management of our party. And of course, Elections Resource Coalition. We review trends in countries like USA on elections and campaign management systems. We looked at Obama's pro Project Nawa in, in 2012 presidential campaign, as well as Romney's Project Orca. If you, any one of you, when you get a chance, please go and do a search on Project Nawa and Project Orca. These are killer whales. We settled on Inframakesia as the name of our project. Inframakesia, the great win, that was to knock down the NDC umbrella. Inframakesia was designed to have the following modules. First one was a customer relationship management, CRM, a global membership database. So, so the, the CRM was supposed to be the global membership database. It was supposed to be the core of the whole application suite. Now, around the core application suite, the CRM was a volunteer management suite, a logistics module, a fundraising database, a management, a message management database, a case management database, and of course, a resource management database. Several party consultations led by Augustine Blay and myself were held in, in, in Ghana here in Europe and of course in, in, the, in the USA. There was even a presentation at the Charlotte MPP USA Congress, as well as an MPP youth event in New York on Inframacacia. Several of the modules were developed and operationalized, but long story short, due to lack of funds and other strategic decisions by the National Party, development of the Inframacacia platform slowed down. And unfortunately, did not play the key role in 2016 national elections as originally envisaged. So let's look at 2016 national elections. So in 2016, it became clear after the ruling of the 2012 Supreme Court case that the key to the fortunes of the party in wrestling power from the NDC was leveraging technology to run the 2016 presidential campaign. 
in particular coalition or presidential election results. Accordingly, the presidential candidate then and the current president, Nana Dodanko Kufuado, appointed my good self as the director of technology and member of the 2016 national campaign team. I believe historians will one day conclude that this single, this singular strategic move by the presidential candidate was one of the key catalysts to the big success of the 2016 presidential elections. One of my first moves when I assumed office in January 2016 was to request through my campaign manager, Chairman McManu, to the national party leadership to instruct every constituency to appoint two IT coordinators who will be the focal point for all IT related matters at the local constituency levels. A regional IT coordinator was also appointed. With these appointments made, my team and I traveled the length and breadth of the country to hands on train the respective constituency and regional IT coordinators. No one was left out. And by the way, I did all this travel with my own car. There was no provision for transportation or provision for um, any, any support because you know, it's, it's, it's a campaign work, it's, it's a voluntary work. There was an initial hesitation by some of the key party insiders, albeit for a good reason. The party had invested heavily in ICT in the 2012 elections, but gained little. Why should the party now in the second term of opposition spend their scarce resource on what looks like a fruitless exercise? However, the presidential candidate and some key people around him, as well as the campaign manager were adamant that the future was technology. They were primarily the reasons why we survived those turbulent initial periods. The team got our biggest breakthrough after successfully executing the 2016 Abertifi by-election. The coalition system worked as advertised. My team was exceedingly happy. We had camped for two weeks in Abertifi in preparation for the by-election. Honorable Brian Champon provided support for the team to include accommodation and many other things. Later on, I heard that if Abertifi had failed, as was in 2012, the whole technology program will have been canned and be replaced by Manoa Coalition. After, after the Abertifi by-election, the whole party embraced the IT team. We were integrated into the former election programs, teaming up primarily with, with the elections and research directorate of the party. The party provided very early mobile devices, laptops, printers, data connectivity devices to the constituencies and bridges. The rest, they say, is history for 2016. I won't even go there. So let's look at 2020 national elections. The 2020 campaign was much easier to operationally prosecute from a technology standpoint. We didn't have to convince anyone that we could do the work. The key components of the operations from the 2016 elections like the IT coordinators were already in place. The campaign renamed the technology directory to digital operations and I was made the director. For strategic reasons, I will not discuss the details of the operational setup of the 2020 campaign, but just to add that our goal for D-Day was to report results accurately and expeditiously, and I believe we met our goals. I believe we provided one of the best election resource interface ever done in any African country. That was why we were able to sing the famous Abamuwe song at 1 a.m. on election nights. Our, our numbers for the presidential election were accurate then at 1 a.m. on election night, as it is even today. And kudos to all our constituency, regional and national IT coordinators. So where are we with 2021 and beyond? 
the party led by the director of IT at the party head office, Mr. Eric Intori, working collaboratively with the director of elections and research, Mr. Ivan Snimakon, and other party stakeholders under the direct supervision of the general secretary have developed a new membership system with an integrated internal elections results module. The system replaces the old membership registration system. In the old system, the party authorized vendors to go throughout the country to register members, issue party cards, and upload the registration database uh, of all, and upload to the registration database of all registered members. There were issues with this arrangement, notably visibility of the registration process. There were even some fake cards that were produced. The new system decentralized the membership registration process. Registration is now done at the polling stations within the constituencies and administered by the constituencies. The system has a module for diaspora membership registration. I will request that I will request that the director of IT of the party headquarters uh, arrange to do a presentation uh, to to Mr. Ibokwansa and his team, the, the uh, MPP uh, USA IT team, so that we see um, you know the stuff that you guys have done and what it is they are doing over here, and see how uh, the both can be uh, leveraged together. The system has a module for uploading results of a polling station electoral area, constituencies, uh, regional and national elections based on the various election resources. I, I heard earlier on my, my, my good friend, Mr. Agbanaza talking about um, albums. In fact, this, this is precisely how the system is, is, is designed. The system allows local albums to be generated for subsequent elections. So for example, in the upcoming constituency elections this month, uh, will be held based on albums generated from the uploaded result from the just ended polling stations and electoral area elections. Eliminating fraud, which, you know, as my friend, Mr. Agbanaza said, typically is associated with a local album compilation. One of the obvious key indicators of the progress in leveraging technology in the party is the recent inclusion of IT coordinators as members of the polling station, electoral area, electoral area elections committee, constituency elections committee, regional elections committee, and national elections committee. This is the first time that the party has included the IT folks in the local elections committee. And this is based on the work that we have done since 20, 2016, the work that we have done, the MPP USA coming to town to, to, to help out with the 2014 and the subsequent work that we have all done. Now the, 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 the party now includes IT coordinators in all these election committees. I can go on and on and on, and, and I'm sure most of you are listening and you want me to go on, but time is not on our side. Um, God willing, we can pick it up another time. But before I conclude, before I conclude, uh, permit me to acknowledge the following patriots whose various contributions, whose various contributions have brought the party thus far in the digitization agenda. Obviously, I cannot mention all names. So if I miss your name or a name, please forgive me. I do, I do, I do the best that I can. Uh, I'll begin with uh, His Excellency Leonardo uh, Danko Kufalo. Our, our, our president, he assembled the 2016 and the 2020 campaign teams, but for his unwavering support, but for his unwavering support. You know, one day I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask how, how he gave this unwavering support. The team would not have survived the initial stages of 2016. I, was, I also want to acknowledge His Excellency Elijah Dr. Mahmoud. Uh, the analysis of the pink sheet in the 2012 election petition was certainly a catalyst to where we are today, digitally as a party. Of course, you know, he provided several support to us 2016 and 2020. I want to acknowledge Chairman Freddie Blay, 
I own the company, the General Secretary John Bordeaux. He and I usually team up to do all the very difficult trainings in the in the Kumasi and you know in, in, in the Bono regions, you know, where our bread our, our, what we call our bread and butter regions. Typically, uh, we do all the trainings together. And he's the key driver actually behind the new membership registration platform. My old boss, my boss, good man, Chama McManu, uh, the back-to-back -back campaign manager of the 2016-2018 campaign. Uh, I want to acknowledge my friend, Gabriel Trader, I call a key strategic advisor, Ambassador Edward Boatin, Honorable Brian Champon, Martin Ajayman Sakosa, former director of elections, my own friend, Ivan Simakon, director of elections and research, Dr. Somwa, uh, Eric Intori, uh, current director of IT, uh, Alaji Mohammed Fauzi, Kwejo Osafomafu, Harry Magnisi. These three people are actually one of the key reasons why we were successful uh, in 2016 and, and, and 2020. And from the MPP USA, my chairman, my former chairman, Nana J. Yeboa, and his MPP USA branch and leadership teams. Nana, your work will speak for you. These are things that you have done, right? No one can take it away from you. It is it's enshrined in, in history. Nana Joe Mensa, my former boss in the 2012 elections. Uh, Charles Amwasante, also my former boss, a pillar in MPP USA IT leadership. Uh, my former chairman, Steve Quartin, the Washington DC chapter and leadership teams. Ambassador Adise uh, Bewa, who consistently provide generous support. My friend, my brother, Augustine Blay, Francis Blay, Kofi Edu. Together, we, 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 we met and strategized and from Akesia. Um, Secretary Augustine Agbanaza, my good friend. This man, he doesn't speak much, but he's very strategic. He's one of the key reasons why we are successful. Uh, what can I say? Or buy yam ponsan from Pom. Let me tell you a story. So, um, Nana Yeboah had given us a task. I think it was in preparation of uh, registration for the Charlotte um, Congress. And it was an online platform. But one time I, I woke up at 2 a.m. To, to provide data input. And I, you know, I was thinking, man, I'm waking up at 2 a.m. And guess what? Who, guess who was online already? Or buy yam was already online at 2 a.m. doing data input. She is a pillar of this, this party. My good friend, uh, Kwame Budu. You know, I can go on and go on, but you, but you see how teams can be successful when they work collaboratively together. And, and I believe this is what we have done. And, and that's why the MPP USA is a pillar uh, when it comes to ICT for, for the party. I want to thank you all for, for indulging me. Uh, God bless our homeland, Ghana. God bless MPP USA branch. I'm done. Uh, thank you very much, the Honorable Joe Anoche, for the excellent uh, submission. We are extremely grateful for your time. And most importantly, we are extremely grateful for your contribution to MPP USA and particularly to MPP's IT infrastructure. I think uh, your name will also be in history uh, as a gentleman who contributed greatly to uh, our party's efforts. So we are grateful for your time. I was particularly touched by your selfless um, effort to mention persons who worked with you. Very often we, uh, we forget people we work with. So I'm, I'm, I'm particularly excited that you took time to mention individuals that you worked with in Greenfield, Maryland. Uh, I think that is something that we all have to encourage uh, to make sure we motivate people. There are people who are contributing in immense ways who are not public. They are behind the scenes um, that we have to, uh, to talk about. Charles Amun, for example, he's my uncle. And he's an excellent man who's doing great works for the party behind the scenes. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Joe Anoche. There are a few people that I would like to acknowledge. Uh, Honorable Hajia Aisha, Deputy CEO, Zongo Development Authority. She's also joined us. Uh, the immediate past, 
I don't know, actually, uh, Richard's tenure ends in April. He's the youth um, organizer of MPP UK. He has joined us. Um, he's leaving his role. Uh, I think he's done a yeoman's job in, in the UK branch. Thank you for joining. Please, if there is anyone that I haven't mentioned, please let me know. I do have uh, Honorable Alexander Fekka, Deputy CEO, Middle Development Authority. Uh, let me see if there are other people that I have to acknowledge. Okay, I think I've, I've gotten everyone. If there is anyone else, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I have a um, Deputy CEO of uh, State Housing, uh, uh, Honorable Sharifa, thank you for joining as well. At this point, I think we have to go ahead and uh, really get the opportunity to showcase what MPP USA has done. I think that's the main reason why we have converged here uh, is to see another um, innovation of MPP USA. So without taking too much time, um, I will ask, Honorable uh, Joe Ebokwansa and Kofi Nyame, the IT team of MPP USA to get ready to walk us through the MPP USA member management platform. We also have the current CEO of Maslock, Honorable Abibata Mahama, who has also joined us. Let me say that we have loyal ladies on the Zoom with us this evening. There are several of them that I've seen. Uh, Prabha, I've seen, I've seen uh, Nanaya Dankwa and other people on the line. If you are a loyal lady and you are on the line, uh, give us a shout out and we'll be happy to mention your name. Um, thank you for joining as well. I've seen people with um, Alpha Patriots also. Thank you for joining us. So at this point, Honorable Ebokwansa, uh, please go ahead. We are also live on Facebook. Uh, so you can go on MPP USA Facebook page and share it with people. And uh, so they can also watch on Facebook if they cannot join us on Skype and Zoom. Okay, uh, as one last person, Adia Pena Atebubu Amantin Constituency Commander Loyal Ladies. Thank you for joining. So Honorable Joseph Ebo Kwanza, please go ahead and walk us through the MPP member management platform. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, everyone, for joining this call. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, because uh, I have my uh, I mean, he's going to be going through the detailed uh, demo of uh, the uh, member management system. Uh, Kofi Ami uh, is actually uh, a pharmacist by profession, uh, but then he took out IT as uh, uh, first as a hobby, and uh, the rest is history. He's been instrumental uh, in the uh, in the uh, what's it called the design and development of this membership uh, management system. Uh, he's also been instrumental in the um, in helping the communication team uh, when it comes to uh, their content management. Uh, he, I mean, any time uh, you call on uh, I mean, he is ready, and you know, and, uh, he will uh, respond, and he will work on any and everything that you you know you give to him. And I I really appreciate him. And at this point, I would just want to introduce him for him to take us through uh, the member management system. Kofi, uh, if you, if you want, take it take it over. Thank you very much. Uh, Kofi, before you before you go on, I'm told we have um, uh, one of our NDC brothers who has joined us. I'm sure our NDC brother is here to, uh, I don't know if I should say do copy and paste, uh, but Honorable uh, Usu Achiang, thank you for joining us. We monitor very closely. Uh, thank you for 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 joining us. Uh, Kofi and I also Kofi Yami and I also go way back. Kofi uh, was part of my team as um, 
the MPP USA uh, Communications Directorate. And a book answer was, a, uh, was completely spot on. Kofi is a hardworking gentleman. He worked with me and made sure whatever it is we wanted to do, we did it on time. Our websites, all our online platforms that we wanted to put together to support our work, he was able to assist us with Honorable Ibo Kwanza as well. So I just wanted to add that indeed, Kofi Nyame is a great personality and I'm happy that he's still working with MPP USA. So Kofi, please uh, proceed. Thank you very much, uh, Kofi, uh, for that uh, introduction. And thanks, uh, my boss, Ebo. I all protocols observed is difficult coming after the heels of uh, Honorable Joanoche and all that history. But we would want to talk through some of the uh, things that we have put in place now that we want to launch. The outline of my presentation would go, we, first and foremost, I'd want to give an overview of some of the member engagement tools that we currently have within the branch that we are using uh, to, in order to engage with our members. Then I'll go into detailed overview of the new member management system, talk a little bit about the features and the rules of all of us, what we need to do. Then uh, hoping that the goals of technology will allow us, we'll go into some physical demonstration of what the tools actually do and how we want to use them. So starting from our member engagement tools, uh, we do obviously have a Facebook. Uh, I think everybody should have a Facebook or must have Facebook, except for the newer folks who are joining, uh, the younger folks now who don't have Facebook. But Facebook is one of the main tools that we use to disseminate the work that we do. We also have a Twitter account where we post uh, activities that are happening and then we use that to also disseminate what we do as a party in order to showcase to everybody at the games that we are having. Uh, joining the newer generation, we also have Instagram account where we post most of our pictures. We are yet to get onto TikTok, which is the, uh, the latest craze in town, but I'm not too sure whether we will go there for now, but we have these tools. In addition to that, we have the numerous WhatsApp groups that we use to disseminate the information that we have. But we all know that WhatsApp is a little bit uh, volatile, everybody determines what they keep and what they don't keep. And so sometimes we really want a place where we can see everything that we've given out and be able to follow what we've given out in a more formal way. In addition to these social media tools, we also have the formal USA, uh, NPP USA website, which is basically the main mouthpiece. So when we release any information, any uh, newsletters or any press releases, we release them through the website and anything coming through the website that is coming from our branch executives is, is the mouthpiece for us. We also developed a communications portal as a means where all our communicators would have the resources that they need. And so here it is only open to our communicators. They only have the logins to that. We try and collate information data that they would need in their communications work in the dissemination of our work. So that, that is more of a database. It's a place where we can share ideas. It's a place where we can put documents. We can put facts uh, that you can pick up and um, use in our comms activities. And lastly and finally, we have the member portal that we are launching today that we are going to demonstrate. So I'll talk a little bit more into detail about the member portal and what it does and why we need it. So speaking to the features of this uh, member portal, it's actually built on uh, uh, a software as a service platform, SAS platform, uh, Wild Apricots. It contains a member database, go into some more details of that. So a database that captures information about all the members, all our emails, our contact information, phone numbers, et cetera, information that members want to volunteer. I really want to assure members that we keep the privacy of members uh, as paramount and we would show you how you can maintain your own privacy as to what you share and what you don't share. Obviously, those uh, admins at the back end have access to everything, but what you share to members or what you share to the public, as it were, 
uh, would be controlled by you as an individual because we really cherish the privacy of our members. It also affords us the ability uh, to manage our payment system. So management of our dues, payment of branch and chapter dues, and also payment for any donations, et cetera, that may be uh, made can also be managed through the member management system that we have. It has an event management system that allows us to create events, register people, uh, pay for the events if you need, and also check in people as they come in uh, for the events. It also has an ability for um, an online store for us to sell party paraphernalia or anything else that we need to uh, sell out there through our system. And lastly, there's a mobile application, a mobile app that will allow you to use this system in a more efficient way, not necessarily always have to go through a desktop version or a laptop version. So to go into some more detail about some of these features. So the database actually affords us the ability to easily search and manage our members. We categorize our members, customize them into the various types or the various chapters. So we have groupings within it. You can have uh, membership by the chapter, by membership by interest groups, membership by any other uh, slices or cuts that we want. Then it allows us to be able to uh, individually update our details. So each person would have management of their own profile where you can put in the information about you, update the information about you. So that we do, our hope is that if each member actively engages with the system and updates their data on a regular basis, then we would have no problem accessing members, no problem uh, sending details or sending information to members when we have, because it will be a self-managed platform and we will not necessarily always have old information of members, but new information as they do that. As I indicated, it is an SAS platform, but we have assurance and guarantee that the database is secure and uh, we know that it have the encryptions and we have the security system so that it is not uh, hacked in and our data all over the place. It affords us the ability to search an online directory and we'll go into that uh, a little bit more. Again, there's a huge email functionality built into the system, which allows us to send automated email confirmations and reminders to members. You all will recall at the end of last year, you probably got uh, some emails from NPP USA telling you that you need to renew your membership, telling you that you had to pay. Uh, yesterday, I sent out an email blast reminding everybody about this meeting. All was done through the system. And we will be using this as a means of sending information through to members. As our, our secretary uh, Augustine said, this will be one way of pushing targeted information to members. Uh, we have ability to design the templates uh, in a beautiful way and each chapter or each group would have the capacity to also utilize this uh, system to push information, to put mails uh, through to them. Another cool feature about it is that when I send these emails to everybody, I know who has opened the email and who has clicked on the links in it so that we can gauge uh, those who can or who are actually interacting with the system. Obviously, you also have the ability to opt out of receiving emails from the system if you think that the emails that we are sending to you is a bit too much. Um, of course, we have the mobile app. Each individual can update their contact details on the go anytime. As I indicated, this also affords the treasurers the ability to take payments immediately, to take payments online. We can set up recurring member payments so that you don't need to remember the funds will be taken from your account if you like it that way. Uh, we can also send invoices and receipts to you uh, so that you are on track and up to date with what you are doing. Once you get your receipts, you'll be able to do uh, and track what you have. We can also generate a lot of reports, customized financial reports that will tell you where you are and what you are. And again, also accept donations online. One of the things I mentioned was event management. Currently, a lot is happening within our various chapters, but that information is not shared. It is our hope that uh, with this system in place, 
we would get information about all the events, all the activities that are happening, and we will put it in a master calendar within the system that will be shared through our member management portal and also through our website, so that we can all engage with each other in all these events that all the other various chapters and groups are doing. We can customize registration forms so we know who is coming in, we know what information that we, we want to capture, so whether we are going to capture information about the individual or guests that you are coming with, we can have all these things done. We can have paid registrations and free registration and all that. We can also use the system to check in attendance. So as you come into the conferences or the meetings, um, based on the mobile app that we have, we can check you in and also um, ensure that we know who attended the events <laughs> and who is not attending the events as, as we move along. Uh, another way is that once we set up the events in there, the system can automatically send reminders in a periodic way uh, to individuals or to those who have registered to attend or reminders to those that the target audience that we want to attend. I mentioned the online store easily we can put in any products that we want to sell and to be able to sell online and um, get that done. Also, we have the mobile application and there are actually two mobile apps that come with the system. There is one app for members and another app for administrators. And so for, for the membership app, uh, once you have this, and I will demonstrate it along the way, you can set the directory, you can have every member, you know the list of members, you can have their contact details right on the palm of your hand in your uh, on the membership app. You can pay your dues uh, using your the cell phone, uh, you can register and pay for events. You can even update your profile. Uh, on the app. The app also contains your membership uh, card. So you can have the membership card displayed on your uh, phone so that you don't necessarily have to carry a plastic card with you all along. And the membership card will contain enough details about you showing whether you are current or not. The app for admins can also be used to do more than just the individual uh, view only aspects of it, but managing contacts, checking in into events, and also uh, receiving payments from there. One feature of the member system is that it's, it's a member only pages only. We can open some aspects of it, but there are some pages that we make it internal only to members. And you would have to have a login, you have to be has approved on the database before you can have access to it. So no, not everybody can get in, not everybody can see the pages that we closed down. And so the member directory, the blogs that are directed towards only members. We also have a member forum and our internal event listings. There are events that we want everybody to attend and there are events that are for us. So these events, we can actually segregate them and have member only pages and some uh, other pages that are open to everybody else. So this, these are the features of the system and we'll go into the demo. Before. But before then, I would want to talk about the roles that we have. As a member, what will be required of you primarily will be to manage your profile. You would see when you get in, when you are a demo, that we have basic information about, about our members, their chapters, their phone numbers, maybe their email addresses that we have in there but there will be much more information that we really want to capture on everybody else so that we have a comprehensive database about all the members that we have to be able to track and follow our activities. So one of the things that we really require of each member is to actively manage your profile. What it means is that you're going in there and changing your phone number when it changes, changes your address when it changes and et cetera, so that we know that your information is correct, putting your pictures and all. Also, you can use it. Your role is to make your payments. Use it for information, for events and announcement, and also to interact with other members of the chapter so that we can use this as a means to get to know each other and to get to benefit from each other's presence. We as administrators, our role is to set it up and to manage it and to update payments, et cetera. There are some payments that may be made offline. We will need to figure out a way to put them into the system so that we have a one-stop place where we can have that. We also have to approve members. You don't apply and automatically get access. 
a member and administrator would have to verify with your chapter that indeed you are eligible and you've met the minimum requirements before you are granted access to the platform. So that's going to be a role that administrators will be playing there. And obviously, we also have a help desk that will assist members in their use. I put this, uh, the accept the terms of use here. Any for as soon as you go on for the very first time, Wild Apricot would ask you to accept the terms of use. Please do it. It is nothing weird because you would be expecting from NPP USA. But as I said, because we are using Wild Apricot's platform, you would be uh, ex you will be asked to accept their terms of use in order for you to get on and use the system. So to go before we get into this, the actual demonstration of the system, I just wanted to show a summary of our membership as we have currently uh, in, the, in our database. I apologize for the small fonts, but if you look at it carefully, uh, we have about 380 seven people registered in the database as of today, as certified by the various chapters. The uh, biggest chapter uh, on this database seems to be Washington Metro with 46 and the smallest with uh, Arizona with one person in there. So this, these are some of the data information that we can get from the system. Now to get into the system, now I'm going to switch over to the demo. There are two ways to get into the system. One, you can get through the NPP USC website, and also you can go directly to the members only portal uh, through the link, the members.nppusc.org. So I'll switch over now uh, to the live demo. Uh, but before I do that, I'll pause here for two minutes if anybody has a question that you want to post to me before I move on to the actual live demo. That is if moderator would allow that. Yeah, uh, Kofi, please go ahead. We'll take about five questions when you are done. Please go ahead. Okay, all right. So thank you so much. So yes, I'll start off. I hope you can see my screen now. So this is the NPP USC website. So this is where everything uh, stands. Now the member management system is integrated into the website. And so you can access it through the website without going through the, uh, the portal itself. But I wanted to show the website as one of the main collaborative pieces that we have. It is important that we all on a daily basis get onto the website and use it. It contains a lot of information about the party itself, about NPP USA, our leadership, our executive, about the chapters, uh, that we have. So this is information about the various chapters that we have. I very much like the Pennsylvania chapter page because they've sent a lot of information in that about what they do on their chapter and other chapter executives with their contacts information and the news about the chapter, whatever is happening in there. So these are, this is where all the information about the activities of the party within this branch is housed and I would encourage all of us to take time to go in there and look for information about it. We also try to come up with news and updates on a daily basis as much as we can to, um, in order to inform our memberships. Now, you would see uh, two features that I want to point out. There's a join us button here. So if there's a new person joining the party and wants to join, you can come in here and click on the join us button and you would be presented with the application form uh, for the party. Now this application form, uh, you apply based on the chapter and to tell you how much you have to pay. Once you apply here, it takes you directly the information comes to the national uh, administrators and we would have contact with the chapter in order to verify that you are worthy to become a member before you are approved. So we have all the chapters listed. The second feature is that, as I indicated, we use the system to get into the member portal. The member login is located at the very bottom of the website. And so when you come onto the website, you would not see the login button at the front, at the top. You would have to scroll to the very bottom of the website in order to be able to get access to the member system. 
currently all the information that is on the website is available to everybody it is public but once you log in as a member you are giving access to more information or more pages uh, i would log in now as janice he's graciously allowed me to use him as a guinea pig uh, that's hope technology works. So if I log in as Janice, the first thing you would notice is that we have a, a new toolbar pop up at the top of the, of the website. That, this was not there at the beginning when I went to the website. You only get these links when you log in, when you're an approved member. And these links will allow you to now interact with the member management system. The first thing you see here is that when you log on, you get your profile. And your pro once, once your profile opens up for you, if you owe money, if you haven't paid your dues, it will tell you right away that your renewal is not done and you have to pay your invoice. Then it has all the information about you as has been input into the system. Now, this is internal to Janice. He sees everything because I've logged in as such. You see everything, including all the dues that you've paid up until date. Um, it also allows you to get into the member directory, as I indicated. As a member, you have access to the member directory. Each individual member has the option to choose whether to come on the directory or not. And so once this is open, you go into the privacy settings and you can choose whether you want to be listed or not. As of now, all 378 people are listed. Again, we would be using this member only news page to showcase or to post news that we want only our members to see. Currently, there is uh, not information there now. We also are creating a member forum. As I said, a lot of discussions happen on WhatsApp, but with WhatsApp, you have the option to delete it and uh, you may come back and you will not see the information that uh, was posted previously. Uh, but we would be on occasionally, topics that we want all of us to discuss and conclude on, we would create some discussion forums for us. I know that the world has moved away from online discussion forums to the WhatsApps, et cetera. But there are times that we really want to discuss something and record. So I have it as a professional as a social forum. We would see the appetite for it and use it. And again, I did mention the, uh, my profile that you can use uh, uh, to update your profile. On the profile page for each individual, as I indicated, you have the privacy button. Here, you can ch choose the privacy uh, settings that you want. The information that you want to, people to see, you select. If you don't want anybody to see, you can edit and say no access, nobody sees it. By the way, even though it says anybody and members, because it is a closed system, anybody is the, is the same as members in a way because any information that you put as anybody, if it were an open system, then any contact, anybody who sees it can't see it. But if, because it's a member only, people would have to log in. So anybody is almost the same as members in this package. So you would decide which information you want everybody to see. So uh, for uh, this current profile, picture, first name, et cetera, anybody can see. But he's saying that for the city that I am in, that my day of birth, my positions, I want only members to see. And for everything else, my phone number, et cetera, no access. So that when on the public directory, on the directory that members see, any information that is listed as no access, nobody would see. And that is very, very important. You also have the option to select the email preferences. The system would be sending emails the chapter, would, the chapter and the branch can't use the system to send emails to you. You have the option to decide that, uh -uh, I don't want to receive these emails. So you can come in and choose the various subscriptions, both to the emails and also to the forum subscriptions, giving you absolute control as to what the system does for you. We also have a functionality in the system that allows you to create an album. So if there are any NPP related events that you are doing, if you have some pictures, 
you can take the pictures, you can upload it here and becomes part of our general album that we want to share uh, with ourselves. Over here, we also have my event registrations. Any events that you have registered on the system that you've participated in, it will list for you. So you know all the events that you have uh, also participated in, all the events that you have registered for, you can have access to them. Then we also have the invoices and payments. This is also a very important part. So all the payments that you've done in the system will all be listed here. And if there are any outstanding invoices to be paid, it will be shown in red. And then you'll be given the option to pay for those invoices online. And so once you click on it, you can use your debit card, your credit card, whatever you to be able to pay for that. We know that there are members who would want to pay offline. And so we have uh, an option for you to pay offline and send the information on the payment through your treasurer to the national treasurer and we will manually update the, your, your profile to indicate that you have actually paid. Now, for any donations that the system uh, is doing, we would also update the, the system with that. So for example, we may create some donations. If you pay any donations through the system, you are able to see all the donations that you've paid on your profile when you come onto the profile. Now, as I indicated, you can edit your profile yourself anytime by hitting the edit uh, button. You can also go to the directory profile. Now, the difference between the main profile here, as we see it, the main profile is everything about you that is in the database. Because you have logged in, you see everything. The My Directory Profile is the information that other people see about you when they log on to the directory of the branch. So for now, when you log on to the directory of the branch and you click on Janice, you are only going to see his name and his chapter. You will not see all the other information that is in the database because he's allowed you to see only this. If he wants you to see more, he can change the privacy settings on his profile that will then allow you to see more about Janice uh, in there. So basically, this is the information about you and how you would interact with the member management system. Those of us at the back end would be able to now collate all this information, send the invoices, send information about other things that are happening to members. So as I indicated, this is one way of getting through that system uh, that is going through the website. The second way is getting through the portal itself directly. And so when you come in and you log on as members.nppusa.org, you get to the member portal, member only portal directly. Obviously, there's some information that we have put out that is public to everybody. So this is the information that is here. So the member portal showcases events that we have listed. So I only have this event, this current event listed there. If you click on that event, you get some more details about the event and how to join, etc. Uh, so when we get more events coming in from our branches, from our chapters and from other groupings, we would post them all here and we can send emails from here. We also created a donation fund here to help our Rupa effort. So you can come in here and you can click on donate and then you can uh, put in your information about you and decide how you want to donate uh, to the fund that is there. On the home page, also, I put here, uh, now I put these two things here as so random as a polo t shirt and cup. We hope that we're going to get some more paneferia that we can sell through our system. You can log into the system again here. So again, if I log in as Chan is, uh, let's see. You would see almost the same thing as we saw on the website, but now this will only be within the member management system in here. One thing about the, the main thing about this is, as soon as you log in, if you owe, it pops out at the bottom right that your renewal is pending, your balance is so much it always will pop up on your profile and to tell you that you owe. Sorry, Janice, I'm telling everybody that you owe. We also now have the member directory here. You can also go into the member directory. It also lists everybody here. And so uh, 
if your picture is in the system, it pops, pops up your picture. So, so this is Janice. So Janice can click on my profile and he sees everything that I want people to see. So in my public profile, I'm showing my full name, my day of birth, my positions and my picture and my profession. Now, on this public profile, I can send a message to the member. So I can click on send a message and the form will pop up. I wouldn't see the email address of the person, but then I'll be able to send a message to the person through the member management system. So you might see somebody on the system that you haven't seen for a very long time. You can send a message and because the person is on the system and the person's email is in the system, they will get the message that you sent to them. Also, I am in the process of finalizing this, creating directories for each chapter. So when I hit on the Washington Metro directory, we'll get only Washington Metro uh, members that are going to pop up here. So we have only 45 people in the Washington Metro. So uh, within the next few days, few weeks, we would populate all of that so that we have all the various chapters also set up. I showed you the discussion forum and the events and the member news. Uh, these are all uh, the same as you would see on the website. So you can either interact on the website directly or you can interact on the, on, on the member portal at the back end here. So essentially, this is the new member management system. And our hope is that we all would go in the populated, especially because I mean, most of us do not have our information uh, up to date on it. We want to see us come in here, update our information, we want to see us use it for payments so that we can control, uh, we, we can get information about everybody and be able to manage ourselves from that perspective. So this is the member management system. This is the NPP USA new member portal that we wanted to showcase to you. I just wanted briefly to show you the uh, communicators portal. So this is just for NPP USA communicators. We have our talking points, our research center and our team members. This is a locked down. If you are not a member, you can only see Madam Josephine and the information that she's giving to us now. So uh, I think I would end it here and open it up for questions and answers. Thank you all. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Kufinyame, for, for such an excellent um, walkthrough of the MPP USA membership management portal. I think this presents yet another opportunity for our great party to leverage. And we have the Director of uh, Elections and Research on, on on the call this evening. So I'm very certain that uh, the party will be reaching out to see how we can leverage this or scale it um, to the entire party. I mean, we are talking about millions of people. So I'm sure they will reach out for, for that. So we are very, very grateful for your time. I think this is a wonderful platform. It gives us the base to even build on to do better things for, for our party. Um, at this point, we'll ask for a few questions. Uh, let's keep in mind that we have His Excellency, the Vice President, joining us very soon. And therefore, we wouldn't want to take too much time. Um, so we'd like for a few questions, and then we'll immediately proceed to the Vice President of the Republic. So, uh, Mr. IT, how do we proceed with this? Um, do people get to raise their hands and we ask the questions and we give them the opportunity to ask the questions? Or do we also allow people to put up questions in the chat room? I think we can we can consider both. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, I think we, we, we... Uh, at this point, I'll let the IT person lead this section. Yeah, could be, uh, yeah, uh, I think Go ahead. We, yeah, I think we can do both. Uh, if and when uh, people raise their hands, I think uh, you can you can call them and then we'll lower the hands. And then, uh, of course, uh, if they also have a question, I uh, will check the chat if they have a okay, question. So, 
before we proceed, I think I. Uh, so please unmute Ralph. Unmute uh, Mr. Ralph to four. He, I before, see his hands up. So let's unmute uh, Ralph. Before Ralph comes on, I forgot to demonstrate. Please the go mobile. ahead. I forgot to demonstrate the mobile port. So this is the screen that you would see uh, on, on, on your profile. So this, I am demoing from my iPhone. So you would see your profile. You can also see the directory of members. Uh, this is from my phone. So this is the screen on my phone. And uh, when you hit on one person to give you the detailed information about that person, if you have any events that are there, they are also listed there. And any tickets that you might have bought. This one says I've not paid my uh, registration. Uh, and but then, so if I want to pay, I can hit complete and then it will take me to the payment scheme. Now this shows me when I click on my card, this brings my card. So this card is now on my cell phone and uh, that allows you to be able to prove that you are a member. Thank you. So we can take the question now. All right, um, so Mr. Ralph Tufo, please go ahead and um, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, this really um, excellent job. And I'll say kudos to Kofi Nyame and the group. Um, my question goes to security. So how secured um, will our information um, be protected um, signing up into this app? Just any assurance of our um, privacy being kept safely for us? As we know, um, with this current even war going on between Ukraine and Russia, we know how hackers are really in their moves right now. So how secure would this be? Thank you. Yes, as I indicated, yes. Um, this is a third party software that we have bought into. We check their security provisions. We check their, their promises as to, and we check their systems as to that. We also looked into their reputation and who is using the system. That is key. And we looked at organizations that are using the system and also to get the guarantees that the system has that strength. And our IT directorate have also looked at it in order to, to assure us that we have that security. Uh, it. When it comes to the privacy, privacy is more us and how we do. And so we as a party, we as a NPP IT team, Yes, we are collecting the data and we have a privacy policy actually on our website that uh, spells out how we use the information that we collect about members and the guarantee of privacy that we give to our members. This is paramount. We know how important uh, personally identifying information is. We know how important people uh, value That's the data that is about them. And so we grant, we give you the assurance. Of the, of the privacy of the information that you have and the security of the system. And we continuously uh, do the assessments to ensure that we are safe and you are safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Have... Nyame. Uh, let's go ahead and take uh, Mr. Edward Akosa and then also uh, uh, Berema Fojo. Uh, so, uh, Uncle Ebo, if you can unmute Mr. Edward Akosa and then Berima Fojo. We'll take those two questions uh, for Kofi Nyame to answer and then we'll proceed. Uh, but Kofi, uh, there's someone who asked a question about support. He wants to know if the support system is 24 seven or not. So you may want to uh, put that question down and answer it as well. So, Mr. Ford, uh, Mr. Edward Akusan, please proceed. Thank you very much. Um, it was it was it a looks quick like uh, Mr. Edward Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much. This is amazing. Um, two things. One question is. You mentioned about the third party. Is it in-house built or is is the third party application that was um, was actually um, brought in? That's that's the first question. Second one is, if let's say uh, another branch want to 
have access to this portal. Are they supposed to subscribe through you or are we supposed to help sure. Apricot themselves? Um, yeah. Another question before I answer, Ima. Okay, Mr. Barry Mafojo, please go ahead. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Barry Mafojo, please go ahead and ask your question also. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, Mr. Um, Bukwansa, let's unmute Mr. Barry Mafojo. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I have a potential fear. I am happy, I'm so impressed about the wonderful de delivery. But my potential fear is that how do we keep this thing out of the reach of our opponents? I have worked with um, the NDC and I know how dangerous they could be. So how can we keep this from they infiltrate, uh, infiltrating our ranks? That's, that's my question. Okay, I'll take these three questions, then we will take oh, them. Thank you very much. Hey, I, I didn't notice that was a honorable for Joe. Yeah, that's yeah. Honorable for Joe. <laughs> yeah, honorable for Joe. Nice meeting you. It's been a long thank time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Kofi. So please, three questions. The one was whether 24-7, honorable for Joe's question, and then also Mr. Kosen's question. So please go ahead. Thank you. So currently, the administrators for the system, uh, myself, uh, uh, Ibu, and then uh, we also have um, our treasurer, Daku, who are managing it. So it is not robot, it's not automated. And once we receive a request, one of us uh, would reach out to you and support you to do it. So currently, we are maintaining a very lean uh, desk for cost reasons. but. If it uh, blows out and we need some more people, we would look at getting some more trained people within the IT team to provide the support. But currently, yes, the support is from the, primarily the administrators who are managing it. In terms of in-house or third party, yes, it's a third party application, but it was built in-house. The customization, et cetera, was all done by us uh, in-house. We didn't use any uh, third party contractor or consultants to do the updates. So we have the information about our members that uh, is within our system that we uploaded and customized and been tweaking it for the past year or two uh, to get it where we are. The question, I wasn't sure whether the question was about another chapter or another branch. I mean, currently, this is for all our chapters. And so uh, each chapter has access to it. Each chapter has their membership in it. But if another branch as in the UK or Canada branch, et cetera. I mean, I think that there is a multi-branch version of Wild Apricot that can be uh, deployed, but probably might be best for them to have their own system, then we can have an interoperability platform. I like what uh, Joe said. Yes, Ghana has built one big one for everybody. We we'll need to figure out how we can be interoperable with that system so that we can push our data on either ways uh, to be able to so that the branch, the national, would have information about other diaspora things. The potential fear is there when it comes to any IT system based on the, um, on the web is there. Now, it is secure for as long as our membership are committed to the security of it. So everybody, if you as an individual has a membership and you are trusted as a member of the party and you have a login, you have access to the directory. And so you, that is all the information that you have access to that is public knowledge to you. Uh, you may not have anything more, but so if we have moles within us who would share that, then yes, that's a bit difficult to control. So apart from that, uh, hacking in, we have the security guarantees, but we also need as individual members to be circumspect and to know that when you are logging in, you are logging in a secure way, you are changing your password and you are not allowing yourself to be used as a conduit into the system. So that is all I can say uh, for that. Thank you. It will be from us. We would have to be from us. Uh, thank you. There was a question you. on 24 hour support. Yes, that 24 hour support is for as long as we can stay up. So, but as much as I know, we do our best. <laughs> Once you send in the request to info at npp-usa.org, we'll be able to get back to you and then support you quickly. Okay. 
Okay, I think we can take Ima. Okay, thank Edwards you very much. Daniel. I'm told uh, His Excellency, Honorable... Excellency, um, hello, Consul, Consul General, if you can give him some audience, that would be fantastic. Um, yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me, please? Yes, we can, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Um, I think hey, what you've done, if I had not joined you this evening, it, it would be a disaster for me. It is very, very comprehensive. But my question is, is the membership open to people who are also not staying in the US? Um, because if you look at the portal, you've seen the place say, join us. Yes, joining it, I do not know if it is left for only the people who are in the US. If other people, especially those of our colleagues who are in Ghana listening to this very program, are supposed also to pay. Um, can we be paying in the CD equivalent, the dollar equivalent, or what? <laughs> if that, that one happens, what do you do? Um, my, my third point is that Considering this very job that you have done, um, I think since we have Mr. Nyame, Mr. Anochi and co on this platform, eventually, I think you can as well make it to the Ghanaian um, phones, especially. Over here, I have realized that when it is about to rain, you will hear some sound, pip, 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 and then, you know, it will, it will alert you. In future, if NPP happens to do something and then we want the whole of the country to know, at least we can prompt people who are using maybe the iPhone or any other phone so that they can know exactly what is happening. I think this is a novice. And I, I will say that uh, we, we thank you so much for this wonderful job. And fortunately, it is also emanating from uh, USA. Thank you so much, sirs. Very much, sir. All right, Kofi, before you answer the question, let, let's take a few more questions and okay. then you answer uh, the Honorable Atabua, who is the uh, consul for the New York consulate, the general consulate in New York. So, Your Excellency, uh, thank you for joining us this evening as well. We do acknowledge and appreciate your presence this evening. Uh, Kofi, there's a question about security of the password. I think Ms. Dr. Ofori Boatin wants to know if you have the capability to make the password requirements very strong. Uh, that's a question for you. Uh, and then I think uh, His Excellency uh, asked a question on payment. Aside from taking US dollars, what other payments are available. But I think that would depend on what platform is being used, either USA or UK or Ghana. I think that will you explain that. So let's proceed to Dr. Stephen in cancer, and then we'll proceed to Kofi Asamwa Bwadu, and then we'll proceed to Guy G. And once we finish with these three people, we'll proceed with Honorable Justin Kodia who also has prompted me that he has a question. So let's proceed in that order. Uh, Dr. Stephen Nkansa, uh, Kofia Samabwadu, Guy G, and then Honorable Justin Kodia. And we'll take it from there. So Kofi, please go ahead. I mean, sorry, Dr. Stephen Nkansa, Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me, please? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, uh, thank you, Kofi. Uh, it's wonderful and I, I join others in congratulating you bringing the whole idea to fruition. My question related to hacking, I think you, you talked about it, but I think you did, we haven't talked about it potentially. It's a real thing that is happening all over the world, whether from your hostile friends or from people who are really against you. I think at the outset, we need to put in place measures that when it happens, when potentially is, the system is hacked, not hard to get our information, but hard in a manner that we can't even do anything. What do we do? I think we must be that kind of strategic as we have done with this platform in thinking, what do we do? 
once the system is hacked, nobody can enter and our information is now no more secured. And I think we need to work around it and put in place measures in the event of hacking. My other question relates to what the previous speaker talked about. And I think you mentioned, but you didn't uh, 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 elaborate on that. There are Ghanaians who have moved back to Ghana. What happens to them and their home, their, their home, their, their place of domicile is now Ghana or regions of Ghana. What do you do with them? Do you maintain their, if they wish to maintain their MPP membership, what do you do with them and payment modalities? And uh, I, I, these are my questions. Thank you, Kofi. Uh, thank you, Doc. So let's proceed to Kofi Asamoah Boedu, please. Hey, Omano. <laughs> Kofi, you have the floor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hear you. Okay, Kofi, uh, we can't hear you. Please check your microphone, here. please. Okay. Uh, as we wait for Kofi to check his microphone, uh, Kofi Nyame has a question on browsers. Uh, someone wants to know which of the browsers uh, uh, will be compatible with the platform. So please, uh, that's a question. Uh, before we get to Co uh, Kofi Asamoah, please, can you proceed? Okay, let's go to Gaiji. We'll get back to Kofi later. Let's go to Gaiji. Yeah. Uh, okay, my question uh, goes to... Uh, Kofi Nyame, I would like to know the legal requirements, uh, probably like what are the legal requirements? Uh, okay, what legal requirements are there for this specific type of ap application? I mean, because of uh, the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like people not seeing us, you know, because, oh, Maybe somebody probably might, you know, donate, you know, and there will be some lapses and, you know, trying to like, you know, just seal uh, MPP USA. So what are the uh, legal requirements? I, I, I would like to know for this specific uh, application. And two, I mean, non-member non of MPP USA, how can they also support or donate to MPP USA? <laughs> Through, through this app. I don't know if, I mean, uh, you yeah. get my yeah. Gaiji, your, Gaiji, your question is well understood. So Kofi, uh, Gaiji's question, it has to do with legal, overall legal implications. Legal requirements, yeah. Yeah, and, and then also people outside the domain of the platform. Are there any opportunities for them to for donate them to, to the party? Financially, yeah. So okay, please, Kofi Nyame, go ahead and answer the questions. When you are done, we'll, we'll move on to the next question. Please. Thank you so much. So I'll start with Honorable Atabuatian's question. Yes, I think for now, this is open to the US. And so um, if you look at the membership form, it only gives you options to belong to a chapter in the US. And so if you are not, if you don't belong to a chapter, you can affiliate. So if you come on and you click and you say you belong to New York chapter, when your application gets to us, we would be consulting with the New York chapter to ensure that you are actually affiliated and et cetera, and all the vetting done as usual before you are. For those of our membership who have moved back home and still want to pay, currently, currently the currency for payment on the platform is the US dollar. And so the alternate will be to do an offline payment 
and then we would update the system in an offline manner uh, so that you would not be able to do a direct payment on the system if you want to pay in any other currency. So that is essentially how we, we have it done uh, for now. Um, uh, Steven in Kansa, my friend Steven. So yes, we definitely take the issue of security and hacking in there. I think yours wasn't too much of a question, but an advice to ensure that uh, we have put in place the necessary measures to ensure that uh, if there is an incident of a hack, what would we do? And so that is well taken. We've talked about it and we will take it more in, into consideration. There's a lot of advice on the platform. A couple of people have already offered themselves to assist with some of that. And so the IT team will be getting in touch with you all and ensuring that we have these systems put in place. I mean, it is necessary because we are capturing data on all of us and we need to assure you that your data is secure and we are also secure. Uh, in that space. Anyway, in respect of the compatible browsers, I mean, uh, as of now, any of the modern browsers is okay. I mean, most people uh, have not had any issues with the typical Chrome's, uh, um, uh, Firefox, or Safari, uh, Opera, or any of those. Of course, nobody using Internet Explorer now, but. Uh, for these standard uh, uh, browsers that are out there, yes, they are all supported and they can do that. Uh, Guy G's question is probably the most difficult one. I mean, I'm not entirely too sure what the legal requirements are, but I'll follow up with that. But essentially, this is an organizational tool. And so it's a question of how is NPP USA protected from collecting data and people and collecting money and what happens if anything happens. So that is more on the uh, branch level we need to look at it, not specific to the tool that we are using to capture that information. So, but I'll follow up again with you in order to get a better insight into it and see what we can do about that. In respect of non-members that are paying, if you would look when I presented the donations, the uh, the portal for members, the donations button appeared. We can make the donations, we can have both internal donations and external donations so that non-members can actually utilize that platform to make donations to any aspect or any course that we are. So you don't have to have a login to be able to donate uh, using the platform. I hope that answers the current questions. Hello, Mr. Operator. Please, please, please. Uh, let's let's check our microphones, please. If you want to ask a question, kindly put your microphone on mute until you are asked to speak, please. Um, so, Kofi Nyame, there are a few questions that I will read uh, for you, and then we'll allow uh, Dr. Tony Adade. Uh, Kamal Guma um, and a few others to come in, Rich Khan and others. But let me read one question in the, in the notes. Let me see. My brother, Rich, uh, please mute. Rich, mute yourself, please mute. Rich. Uh, okay. I think uh, the question has already been answered. So let me go ahead and allow. Dr. Tony Adade, uh, for those of you who don't know Dr. Tony Adade, he's the CIO Chief Information Technology Officer for Wusta State University. Uh, he's been with the party for a very long time. Uh, he's a senior member of the party, has held several executive positions in corporate America and then also uh, in the UH, uh, in the college or university education system in the United States, currently chief. Uh, Mr. Dr. Tony Adade, please uh, go ahead. Let's unmute Dr. Tony Adade. Yeah. Thank you, Kofi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead, Doc. Thank you, Kofi. Um, and, and, and thank both Kofi this, for, for the good presentation. Kofi, both Kofi Name and uh, Tonto. And uh, Ebo, it's been a long time since we saw each other. Thank you all. This is a very good presentation. Um, my question is actually, it's not a question. It's a, it's a, a comment. It's on the security. 
and this is very commendable. I need to say that this is really commendable. You've done a good job, the leadership and everyone. When it comes to system security, for those of us who have been in the business for many years, um, it, it's, it's difficult to guarantee. I don't, I'm not sure if any company or institution can guarantee security, either it's online or through SaaS or even standalone. It's very, very difficult to uh, guarantee. Even the, 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 the institutions or the companies that wrote the rules, you know, the PCI compliant rules for security are falling victims. You know, banks, retail companies, Target was a victim several years ago. You've probably heard about it. So what we need to do, I think, going forward, or the, uh, the team needs to do is to make sure that people are educated in terms of what you need to do to protect yourself because it starts from us, the user. You know, security starts just like physical security. When you leave your home, you don't leave your door unlocked, okay? So the, that's where it starts, us. There are certain things that we need, we can do to uh, protect ourselves. And I'm, I'm sure they know all that. So the, as time goes on, please share that information with us. You know, let's educate ourselves about what we need to do in terms of protecting ourselves, because it will start with us. If I go, if, no matter how much security you put in place, if I go and click on a link, okay, that's, that's, that's vicious or, or, or bad, or malicious, I will bring the, 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 the system down, okay? So we need to educate ourselves about what we need to do to protect ourselves and not just rely on, on, on the IT team, which I know they've been doing a good job and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Doc. So please, let's go to Kamal Guma. Kamal Guma is a current deputy youth organizer for MPP USA and also an aspirant for the national youth organizer position. Kamal, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Kofi, my brother. And thank you, His Excellency, for this opportunity. My questions goes to uh, about recruitment or joining the Member, membership. My question goes. To, my question goes to, if you if you want to join the the branch, you have to go to um, the app or, or the website. But does it mean now you have to join the branch before you are directed to your chapter? Because. In the chapter, there used to be a way of uh, profiling people to know their intention before them being accepted to be members. Because during your meetings, you have some secret to share. So does it mean that now we have to pass through the branch as a new member, you have to go to the website and join before they will send you to your branch? That's my question. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Let's go to Kojo Day. Kojo is a media person, uh, a member of the party, and also a staunch media person uh, in the DMV area. Kojo, please go ahead. Thank you, Kofi. Uh, both Kofi, uh, Kofi Nyami and Kofi Toto uh, for this yeoman's job. Uh, my question was regarding like being able to love him are we going to be provided with like usernames or members? How are you going to log in in terms of that? That's very important. Like, I know we are members, we have members ID card. Do you, are we going to be provided like a unique number or username for us to be able to log in to the system? And once that is done, like the gentleman who just spoke said, uh, do we have to go through our branch before we do that, or is it something that is going to be provided to members who are already registered? That is my question. Okay, thank you, Kojo. Thank you very much. Um, um, we will proceed to ask a few questions in the chat, and then uh, Honorable Justin Kodia from Pong Kodia will come on and we'll proceed from there. So Kofi Nyame, let me read a few questions to you. There's one about uh, two-point authentication. Uh, someone wants you to speak about two-factor two authentication. Um, someone wants to know, will there be a verification system to identify a donor uh, to avoid anonymous donations? And then, Another person asked uh, Mr. Samuel Sakodie, 
uh, asks, should we expect a mobile app version? If there is none, how can we socialize the app? So Mr. Kofi Nyame, please go ahead. Once you finish, uh, Honorable Justin Kodia will follow. Um, Honorable Justin Kodia, please raise your hands on the Zoom call so we can know your name and unmute you. So please raise your hands and then we can unmute you, please. Thank you. So Kofi, Kofi Nyame, please proceed. Yeah. Right, thank you. So for uh, Honorable Kamal's question, and I think it, uh, yeah. So no. Chapter would always have to verify membership. So yes, this is a facilitating way. You come on, you fill the form. The form would be emailed. Currently it goes to about three people, three or four people. Now we would send that form back to the chapter leadership for the chapter leadership to do their verification and inform the uh, administrators whether or not that individual is actually somebody who qualifies and is a known member and should be accepted before the person is approved on the system. So there is an approval system. It doesn't bypass the chapter. Yes, once you fill the form online and you make the payment online, the form and the funds go to the chapter, but we have a way to know which money belongs to who. It will be sent back and the form will be sent back to the chapter for the chapter to verify that this person actually belongs to the chapter and needs to be registered. So that would be done. Uh, Honorable Kojo, yes. Uh, right after this presentation, right after the launch, I will be doing two things. One will be sending an email to everybody which will give you your username and a temporary password, and you will be required to change your password right after you receive it uh, in order to uh, get into the system. Uh, we've talked about, somebody's asked a question about two-factor authentication. Yes, the system provides for it. I've not really switched that on, I'm still talking to. So we will be putting some of those in as needed, uh, very much like the advice that Dr. Daddy gave. It is really up to us to be able to do that. On the question about verification of uh, donors, every donor would have to identify himself. We don't, the system currently, yes, we can ask for anonymous donors, but we won't do that. The systems currently is such that uh, you would have to provide all the information about you. Once the funds get into the bank account, we would have to validate that the treasurer would have to go through that due diligence before they pick up or before we accept it. And if it is funds from somebody that we don't want, the treasurer will cut the check back to the person uh, that is there. So basically, uh, that is that. For the mobile version too, yes, there's a mobile version. I would also send an email out to all registered members on the system now, and that will give you the link to the mobile version for you to download. As I noted, there are, we need to do some data cleanup. There are 378 members on the system as of now, but about 128 of them either don't have email addresses or their email addresses are not correct. So when I send out email blasts, I always uh, get that error. And so we will be also working with the chapter leads in order to ensure that uh, we can update everybody's information. So if you are on and you do not receive an email within the next 24 hours, or you did not receive an email from me or from the system uh, within the past 24 hours inviting you to this event, then means that the email that I have for you is not correct. Uh, so um, in that case, you would have to get back to us and then we will do that. But we will be going through the efforts of working with the chapter leads to ensure that uh, we would come up to date with everybody over time. Um, the username is going to be your email on record and a password will be emailed to you and you would have to change the password. We would put in place policies that will allow us to keep changing your emails, uh, change your account uh, passwords over time so that we can get the security systems in place. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Please, um, we'll take a few more questions. His Excellency, the Vice President has joined us. Uh, so we are going to take a few more questions and we'll proceed. Uh, so very quickly, ask your questions very quickly. Uh, CEO Justin Kodria, please proceed. Uh, the CEO of uh, Ghana Digital will follow uh, KBA and then Majid 
we'll follow. And then lastly, virus will give us feedback and then we'll move on to the next. So uh, CEO, Honorable Justin Kodia, please proceed very quickly for us. Uh, thank you very much and good evening to all of you. And I must start by commending um, the U.S. branch for such an innovative uh, program. It sits very well with our which is digitization of our simple question would be that in partition and not just only. I want to. Well, this coming in place knows who are active and those who are not active in this in determining party internal elections and also taking such this out file um, from the development. Okay, uh, uh, CEO, we didn't really hear your question. Your line is breaking yeah. up. So if you can adjust yourself well, I think I heard something about uh, internal systems, but your line is breaking. Um, is it better now? Yeah, it's, it's better, yeah. Yeah, so I, I started by saying that I wanted to commend the um, U.S. branch for this innovative um, idea and policies or the structure that they are trying to uh, put up. But my question uh, was about with reference to the party constitution. You know, when we state that a member is of good standing, it is not just only limited to payment of dues only, but also being active and also attending party meetings are also very key in determining a membership status. So I wanted to find out whether in the system we have a way of also check, checking attendance to see whether a person participates in the party activities or not. Yeah, excellent question. Very, very good question. Um, please, let's proceed. CEO of uh, uh, Ghana Digital, Onabu Kojuba, please proceed. Yeah, um, COVID chance for welcoming me. Um, I, 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 I greet every, everybody here. Um, it's quite an elaborative and an impressive system. Uh, my question is, what is the plan and how are we going to replicate this into the main party um, membership drive? Because um, the world is changing now. Everything is being digitized, and we we we're looking out for technological solutions to most of our problems. Um, how is the party in general going to um, adopt this platform for membership drive, for for dues payment, and for even for other activities? Because I know it can be built up to migrate other functions of the party. Are they in any way trying to? Connected to the national party, so that we 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 implement it as part of our membership drive process. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Honourable uh, Ba Kajoba. Um, thank you very much, um, uh, Virus. Please proceed, and then we'll come to. Um, huh. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can yeah. Virus, please proceed, and then we'll come to uh, Honorable Eric Intori, Director of IT at the Party Headquarters. So, Virus, please proceed. Yeah. So this is just um, a feedback, and I would say um, kudos to the team back in the USA. So, um, and I know there was a, a previous question about um, members who have moved to Ghana. Uh, if they want to maintain their membership. I just wanted to give feedback that I mean, this morning uh, when I got an email from the team uh, that I owed money, I was able to pay uh, my dues online uh, using um, my my card from Ghana. So it, it does work. So I was at least I was able to do it. So um, if you're in Ghana and you still want to maintain your membership, uh, now I'm, I consider myself a member in good standing because I made my payments today. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Virus. Uh, 
the Honorable Eric Intori, please proceed. And then Majid will proceed. And then we'll bring the questions to an end. His Excellency, the Vice President, has joined us. I would have to move on so he, he gets the opportunity to engage us. Uh, so uh, uh, Director of IT at the party office, Honorable Eric Intori, please proceed. Okay. Uh, is the Honorable Intori on the line? Okay, so as we wait for him, Majid, are you still on? Yes, I'm on. Okay, Majid, please pr proceed. Uh, your line is uh, red, so your network is red. So please adjust yourself so we can uh, hear you. So please go ahead. Um, good evening to everybody. Um, this is just, it's just a commendation that I'm giving to the people USA. Well, we, we've done it again, once, once, once more leading the initiative. This is a very brilliant, brilliant uh, system. And I'm sure that uh, in the next few months, we will see the benefit of it. And I'm just going to say thank you to uh, the leadership by the chair, chairperson, Obaya, and then the uh, other executives. Uh, I say kudos to everybody that made this uh, lunch uh, uh, successful. So I'm very happy to be part of this great, great, great day. And uh, that's, that's all I have to say. It's, a, it's really a, a commendation. All right. Thank you very much, uh, my brother Majid. Grateful. Uh, Kofi, now make quick questions. Uh, Lydia Harris from Ohio wants to know once they make payments, how certain are we that their financial privacy will be protected? So please answer the questions for us and then let's proceed to the vice president. So, Kofi, now very quickly uh, and then let's proceed to the vice president. Thank you very much. So I'll take Justin's question first. He talked about uh, whether or not we can check attendees. Yes, we can. With the events feature, if the chapter wants to track its members, they can set all their meetings as an event on the package, as an event in the system. And then when members come for the meetings, they can mark attendance by admitting them in. So there would be a record as to who attended what meetings within the package and over time, they'll be able to use that. So yes, it has that feature in it. It has that functionality that can be extended to that. Uh, in respect of replication to the member, uh, to the main party and all that, I mean, if you note the point that Eric, uh, our IT director in the national made, the, the, and Joe also uh, referred to it, that at the national level, they've also produced something that caters for most of this. So I think what we will be doing uh, as US based on this is to look at how we can interoperate with the system that they have in Ghana. So that at the end of the day, we collect this data, we collect our information, and then we pipe it into that system so we can have a seamless integration about the system here and there. So we don't have to register on two systems. So we'd have to look at how the various systems that have been developed will talk to each other, will interoperate in order to have that done so that we don't necessarily reinvent the wheel uh, within the system. Um, so, but for Lydia's question, that's a tough one, but that has to do with some of the reporting requirements that we have as a party. We have a status within the uh, uh, registration status and there are some reporting, but I don't think we report on individuals. And so the privacy is ensured in there, uh, unless um, uh, I think the treasurer can speak more to financial privacy as to the donations, uh, the fees that we pay to, to the branch, but, as far as I know, we do not uh, send this information voluntarily to anyone who asks for it, but there are rules and regulations that guide what we do. And there are some reporting requirements based on our status as a political party registered uh, under the laws of the US. So I think that's what I have for now, Kofi. Yeah, Kofi, so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for such an excellent submission. We are extremely grateful for taking us through the membership platform of the MPP USA uh, branch. We are very grateful to you, to the entire IT team, to your boss, Ebo Kwanza, 
and to your chairperson, Obaya Frimpong, and to the communications director, uh, Ms. Josephine Ajikum, and to everyone. Very grateful, the branch secretary. At this point, let me introduce the Honorable Prince Ajay, uh, an astute economist and financial person as well. He is the chairperson of MPP USA chapter. Uh, Honorable Prince Ajay will do us the honors and introduce the public to us. So we'll get the opportunity to hear from him. So Honorable Prince Ajay, please uh, go ahead and introduce His Excellency to us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, my brother, Kofi. Uh, can you hear me better? Please. Very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, the chair of the MPP USA. Thank you for the opportunity to introduce our keynote speaker uh, for tonight. And so, um, ladies and gentlemen, tonight it is an honor, absolute honor for me to introduce the guest speaker for tonight. Uh, His Excellency Alhaji Dr. Mahmoud Dubaumia is the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. He's been the Vice President since January 2017. Proud to uh, becoming a full-time platform politician. He served as the Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, uh, the Bank of Ghana. Uh, Dr. Baumia, as affectionately called, is a consummate economist with strong affinity for technology. Since taking office, among other things, Dr. Baumia strategically orchestrated a move to move Ghana to a new um, economic paradigm, digitization. Through his pragmatic leadership, we now have Zipline, Ghana.gov platform, among others. It is not surprising that Dr. Baumia has won a lot of accolades for digitization. Today, as members of the MPP USA, we are absolutely excited to have this gem, Dr. Baumia, to be the keynote speaker at the launch of the member management system of MPP USA. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to introduce to you, my friend, our keynote speaker for the night, our Vice President, His Excellency, Dr. Mamudu Baumia. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, this is a blessing. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. Hooray. Thank you very much. Incoming President. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hooray. Wow. Thank you very much, Prince, and um, our chairperson of the MPP USA, Obayar, and the distinguished executives of the MPP USA chapter. Um, I will stand on existing protocols and wish you all good evening. I'm very excited to be able to join you. Uh, today um, on this very, very important launch uh, that you are doing. It really is an honor to join you on this special occasion as we launch the membership management system for the United States chapter of our great party. Let me start by expressing my gratitude to all the chapter party members for this significant achievement. Um, fellow Kukrudites, I was indeed delighted when I was informed of the membership management system embarked upon by the chapter. This initiative shows that we are practicing what we are preaching. The government of His Excellency Nana Dodankwa Kufuad remains resolute in ensuring that every Ghanaian citizen benefits from the government's deployment of technology 
based development initiatives. The world economy is rapidly transforming due to the evolution and growing use of technology in both public and private sectors. Interestingly, this pace of digital transformation varies across the globe, and this has significant implications for long-term economic development and growth, presenting major opportunities as well as challenges for developing countries. There's of course a large body of empirical evidence confirming the capacity of digital technology to create jobs, boost productivity, increase income, and support wealth creation. For example, the 2013 World Economic Forum's Global Information Report estimates that an increase of 10% in a country's digitization will result in a 0.75% growth in GDP per capita. That is very significant, that a 10% increase in digitization should result in a 0.75% increase in GDP per capita. Therefore, countries that fail to digitize their economies are likely to be very uncompetitive in the emerging global di digital revolution. Therefore, when this government assumed office in 2017, we asked some pertinent questions. How prepared is Ghana to compete in the emerging global digital revolution? And is the existing public sector administration fit for purpose? The answers to these questions gave us insights into the current challenges and also served as a framework for developing the government's digital transformation agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, the major challenges of the public sector system as of 2017, when we examined what we had inherited, included the fact that citizens and residents could not be uniquely identified. And with population growth, this became a major shortcoming. We also had duplication of several public sector processes, which gave room for bureaucracy and corruption in offices. We did not have a functional property address system in Ghana, and that posed a further problem. We also had widespread financial exclusion. Most people did not have a bank account or any vehicle for bank-like transactions. Government databases were largely manual and uncoordinated. They were sitting in silos and as well as being manual. Therefore, we understood this challenge and we decided to address this. And one of the few things that, I mean, one of the few areas that we, we resorted to in, in addressing this was really to, to take a look at the public sector and try to digitize the operations of the public sector. Ladies and gentlemen, the several layers of unofficially commissioned agents at ports, passport office, vehicle registration, driver's license offices, turned these public offices into arenas of open, tolerated systemic corruption. The pervasiveness of corruption was made possible by the overly centralized service delivery systems, excessive use of paper, the complexity of processes, and the lack of transparency. These corruption challenges inform the digitalization of the passport office. The introduction of the paperless port system in 2017, the Ghana.gov online payment platform for prompt payment for public services, amongst others. It is very, very interesting to note that when we digitize the 
passport office. Of course, that means that you can apply for passports online. There was, there's been a very dramatic increase, of course, in applications and revenue that is generated to the passport office. Last week, I asked for data from uh, the passport office in to look at what happened, what was the case in 2017 before we started the digitalization and what is the situation today? And it's really like night and day. At the end of 2016, passport applications that were recorded in the manual system was around 66,000 passport applications. And they, they, they were um, getting uh, revenue of around 1 million uh, Ghana CDs for, for, for that year. But you move to 2021, five years later, and passport applications in 2021 was 478,000. And the revenue for the passport office was 26 million, from 1 million to 26 million. So you see that um, <laughs> a lot of their revenue was not good coming to them before digitization, uh, but now you are seeing that they are directly receiving a lot of the revenue and all the middlemen and the guru boys and so on have been cut off. And you see similar numbers coming out of the DVLA uh, for, for that, you see the ports uh, and so on. So we are, these changes are having a major impact. The Ghana.gov platform, which is a one-stop shop for application for government services uh, where you can apply and pay directly uh, and then receive the service. Uh, again, we have implemented it. Quite uh, the, the majority of uh, public sector institutions are on board. There are still a few yet to get onboarded, but we expect that to happen in the next few months. But you would see a major increase in, in collections as far as the Ghana.gov platform. And, and since we instituted that platform, it has collected about 55 billion Ghana CDs, which has gone directly into government account. And I dare say that without this platform, a lot of this 55 billion Ghana CDs would have come through cash and gone into some people's pockets without actually getting into the, to the government account. Um, and and we, we really see uh, that the um, system uh, of digitization is working. Now let's look at revenue mobilization. Uh, and of course, it, it difficulties of identifying individual citizens was a big problem. Before we came into office, only 4%, 4% of the adult population of Ghana had tax identification numbers, only 4%. Now, of course, you, got, you guys in the US, uh, you know that, uh, that you know, you, you, everybody pretty much, your tax identification number is like your social security number. Uh, and everybody has to file taxes by April 15th or you, are, you have a problem. We didn't have that situation. Only 4% of the adult population had tax identification numbers. So we, of course, issued the Ghana card, which is the national ID card, a biometric card. And we decided to just implement a simple solution. We said, let's convert the Ghana card number your national ID number to your to be your tax identification number. And we did that. And once we did that, we moved from 4% of the population with tax identification numbers to 85% of the population, adult population with tax identification numbers. And we will soon uh, be in the 90s as we continue to issue the national ID card. Of course, now the national ID card number is also your SNIT number um, and it's also your national health insurance number and so on. So we are integrating all of these different databases across the public sector. And it is saving a lot of money because SNIT, for example, is no longer going to be printing SNIT cards. National health insurance is no longer going to be printing national health insurance cards. And SNIT is going to be saving some $30 million every year as a result of this uh, integration 
that that we are seeing in 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 this whole thing. But one of the major areas that we we have. Um, really transformed is in the area of financial inclusion. We know that um, when you have a situation where many people are excluded from the financial system, you are not able to, to have the type of development because economic activity is limited. And so when we came into office, we thought that the, we needed to implement a system where we can allow you know, most Ghanaians uh, to have bank accounts. But we knew that a lot of Ghanaians had mobile money accounts, but did not have bank accounts. So our strategy was to implement mobile money interoperability to allow the mobile money account to operate like a bank account so that you could move money between mobile wallets and bank accounts. Now, so we had a two-step process for mobile money interoperability. First of all, when we came into office, you could not move money between one telco and another. If you had mobile money for Vodafone, you couldn't transfer to someone with mobile money for MTN or Tigo. So the first stage of interoperability was to make sure that we had a system where you could move money between the mobile money companies. But the real game changer for us was to have interoperability between the telcos and the bank accounts. Uh, so the banks and all the telcos had to come together uh, with Gibbs and we worked this out. It was phenomenal what has happened. And it has transformed Ghana because by doing so, a mobile money account in Ghana is just like a bank account. We are the only country that I know of in Africa that has done this. And I don't even know of any country uh, in the world, uh, but, but I'm, I, I will stand corrected. But we are at the leading, we are at the forefront of this. And this mobile money interoperability has transformed uh, uh, you know, the, the financial inclusion space because it has really made sure that at least 90 to 95% of the adult population of Ghanaians have access to a bank account, uh, which is huge. Uh, and it has made Ghana the fastest growing mobile money market in Africa. Mobile money cumulative transactions at the end of 2016 was 78 billion Ghana seas. 2016 ended. Subsequent to mobile money interoperability, the transactions today, cumulative transactions at the end of 2021 was 905 billion Ghana CD. So you move from, in terms of cumulative transactions, 78 billion to uh, 905 billion. But that just shows you scale of, of what has happened uh, since we moved uh, into mobile money interoperability, and 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 that that really uh, has brought financial inclusion. So it's a problem we have lived with since independence. Uh, so many people out of the financial system, but now with what we have done with mobile money interoperability, we have been able to solve this problem. Ladies and gentlemen, the chapter's deployment of a membership management system is indeed laudable and worthy of emulation by other chapters. Some of the benefits of such a system would include in, um, improved efficiency of administrative processes and daily managerial operations at the Secretariat, improved decision-making as membership data and activities can be made readily available faster, increased engagement amongst members as the digital system as a whole spectrum of digital membership capabilities. It will provide this whole spectrum of capabilities. And also it will increase the level of loyalty and trust among members as there is continuous and sustained active engagement. Without a single iota of doubt, I believe the system will begin to deliver some of these benefits, and I urge other chapters of the party to learn from this initiative. Once again, I congratulate the MPP USA chapter 
the executives and members who contributed to making this a reality. Next week, I'm going to be speaking, that is on Thursday, on the 7th of April, uh, I will be speaking on the state of the economy uh, in Ghana. And I want to invite all of you who can make time uh, on the 7th of April uh, to listen. I I'm sure we will be on Facebook and all many, so many media uh, stations uh, and, and, and to listen and we will, we will have something to say um, on the economy, the state of the economy, um, and that we will share our analysis uh, and assessment with the rest of Ghana. But if the members are available and can, can avail themselves of some time, I, I would ask you to, to, to listen in on, 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 on the you know, lecture I'll be giving at the TESCON conference. Uh, we're on the state of the economy. Uh, but I want to thank all of you uh, for, 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 for your time and for listening. Uh, may God bless our great party and our nation, Ghana. Thank you for your attention. Oh, hooray! Alhamdulillah. Vice Alhamdulillah. President, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. You are the you are a bad. You are a bad. Thank you. 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 Thank, thank you. you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good job, good job, good job. Thank you. Nice thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Okay. Thank, so you thank, you. Bye -bye. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Bye -bye. Is the best. Thank you. Bye -bye. Mr. IT, you please, please, please congratulations. everyone. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Thank IT, you, your excellency. Yes. This is huge. This is very huge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Say hello to Mama for us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Tundu. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. All the best. Thank you. Um, thank you. Is, um, thank you, sir. Yes, Madam Chair, taking over. Okay. Right. So, hello. Uh, let's let's continue. Uh, Madam Chair wants to say thank you to His Excellency the Vice President before he leaves. Um, so please, um, I'll be introducing uh, Madam Chair to say, make a few comments before His Excellency leaves. Uh, but before His Excellency leaves, uh, I have a quick uh, message that I want to pass on. His Excellency, uh, as yeah. you know, in the US, we have the credit system. Yeah. So as you are building the digital platform, my hope is that at some point, Ghana will get to a credit worthy system where we can check individuals credit uh, when they want to uh, get a loan or rent a place. Yes. Uh, it is my hope that we'll get to that stage at some point. Uh, yes. In uh, fact, it, what we are doing, in fact, you are, you are so, you, it's as if you are reading my mind. That's exactly where we are headed. Because to do, a, a, we've got credit reference agencies, but they've not been effective because you don't have unique IDs for people. You don't have un addresses for their, their places and so on. But now we are building those pillars. And I think the next stage uh, is, is, for example, now from July, you cannot have a bank account if you don't have a national ID in a sense. You know, so the, the banks will be enforcing it and all of that. So we will be able to track credit uh, history uh, much, much more. And this is where we are headed, actually, the next phase of this. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Your Excellency. Lastly, employment. We have a lot of young people 
who are looking for jobs. Yeah. Uh, as you are creating the digital infrastructure, are we also looking at opportunities for young people to live in Ghana and get job opportunities abroad? Just yeah. like India has leveraged to create yeah. jobs for their youth. Is this something that no, you are I, looking I, to do? Yeah, I think that one of the things that we are trying to do as this uh, global economy is growing is to build our digital skills uh, for the youth. And I think it's very, very, very important. I don't really think that digitalization should create unemployment. What our experience in Ghana is that, in fact, digitalization is creating a lot of opportunities for jobs. Um, look at the drones. We are, they are, we are now have six drone centers, and they are 100%, 100% manned by Ghanaians. Uh, and they have the flight engineers and so on. Recently, they've had to come and pick some of them to go uh, to South America and so on uh, to help them start in those. Ghana is the world's leading drone, medical drone delivery center, the world, whole world. You know, and that is because of technology that is coming. The address system has transformed the post office and it has transformed e-commerce. People can deliver things right at your home and all of that. So it's job creating. And if we build the skills of the young people, um, they can do all of these outsourcing uh, and, 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 and so on as places like India and so on are doing. So I believe that if we empower the youth, uh, the whole digitalization process, because the whole world is moving in that direction, will create jobs and enable us to create jobs for the youth. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you. I'm very grateful. These were the two pressing questions on my heart. It is my prayer that God grants you the wisdom to execute these things. I think Ghana will go a long way if we are able to execute them. Thank you. At this juncture, I would like to invite the Honorable Obaya Frempon uh, to make a few comments. Uh, Obaya, please proceed. Yeah, uh, yeah thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Tonto, for this opportunity. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Vice President, for making time to be here. Uh, before you declare the system as launched, uh, it looks like I've been having so many text messages about people wanting more. And <laughs> that if you can honor to be physically present at our, at our next conference, which is in Cincinnati, Ohio, on June 3rd, to okay. uh, we'll be very much grateful. So okay. we're going to just do an informal invitation to you before we- Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take a note of that and we'll work towards I'll that. hand it over to the MCs. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Obaya. Yeah. Thank you. Obaya, thank you for the uh, intellectual or digital ambush. Uh, <laughs> this is an excellent one. <laughs> uh, your Excellency, you. we are extremely grateful. Uh, I would like thank to you. know if you want to take a question or two from our audience before you proceed. Uh, if no, yes, I think you, can... you should. Pro I think you should proceed. Um, and and let's get this uh, done. We'll have another time for extended questions, hopefully. Okay. So on 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 that score, then we are very grateful to you, Your Excellency. Uh, thank you very much. We'll go ahead and proceed. Uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Uh, it's all the endeavors that you have Ghana. ahead of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent. And congratulations for this formal launch of the membership system. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Excellency. Yeah. Wow. This one is thank you. Wow, bye. -bye. <laughs> That's too much. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Obaya, you okay. thank you. Obaya, congratulations. Yeah, that's so much. Are you lady back up? Obaya, congrats, congrats. That's really good, yeah. my dear. <laughs> my sister, oh, oh, my oh, sister. Oh, the Obaya, oh, Obaya, congratulations from Ghana too. Because you your own brother. Thank you all for. Thank you, I'll call you hey, lady, this is to blame. Thank you for the great job. We appreciate oh, it. Right. Thank you for it. Oh,
Good job, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Yeah. Impressive. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Mesa, can you proceed with the final stance of the program? Thank you very much, you know, uh, Ms. Josephine Ajikum. Uh, would like to... Would like to, at this, you know, uh, juncture, call upon our sister, uh, Evelyn Opoku Sakodie uh, to give us a vote of thanks uh, before we finally wrap up, you know, the program. Am I on? Yes, you are in. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it gave me an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this event to all dignitaries and all on this Zoom conference. First and foremost, I thank our keynote speaker, the Vice President of Ghana, His Excellency Dr. Mahmoudou Ma Mahmoud Baumia, who took time off um, his very busy schedules to honor this event with his inspirational thoughts on uh, digitization and digitalization. I would uh, like to thank our guest speaker, the Director General of the NCA, Mr. Joe Anoche, um, our very own former Deputy Director of the MPP USA Branch IT Department. Um, I'll also thank Mr. Augustine Blay for his insightful thoughts on leveraging the technology to move Ghana forward. A special thanks go to Mr. John Bodu, who could not be here for this event, but um, he was also part of it, uh, of this. Um, today's event would have been possible not for the leadership of the MPP USA branch led by the indefatiable Mrs. Obaya Frimpong, my own little sister. Since becoming the chairperson of this branch, she has, with the able assistance of our executives, decided to make the management of the branch more efficient. And that drive culminated into the development of this member management system. Special thanks to Mr. Joe Ebopansan, the current director of IT, and Mr. Francis Abuajunyami, who took this project from conception to completion. Last but not the least, I will thank Mr. Ivan Sinemakon, director of elections and research, all CEOs of Ghana, all other party executives and members from Ghana, and all MPP US members and all invitees who took the time off to deem our um, invitation and to be part of this Zoom conference for your cooperation in making this function very sound and success. I thank you all and may God bless Ghana. May God bless the MPP USA and may God bless our own Obaya for this very, very successful event. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Evelyn Sarkodier for uh, such an awesome uh, uh, vote of thanks. I would like to move before we called on Reverend Sarkodier to give us a uh, closing prayer. I would also like to acknowledge on behalf of, you know, the chairperson and the leadership of the branch, you know, our uh, colleagues, uh, branches across, you know, uh, many of the continents who have made it possible to join us tonight 
uh, in witnessing, you know, uh, one of the great things that has been done in the history of our party, and for that matter, external branch as well. And to all the diasporans who have had the privilege, you know, to participate in this particular endeavor, we want to say thank you very much for such, you know, uh, commitment and time and devotion that you've given to us. And we believe that this is not us alone, but you'll be joining us, you know, and reaching out if you have a need as well for our IT team to also be there to support you as well uh, because of their great and brilliance in this particular uh, work, work of uh, technology development. Uh, on that note, I just also want to say those of you who are still awake in Ghana, we thank you very, very much. And we know that we are all counterparts in this you know, particular process. And very soon we would all be you know, doing a lot of great things through this manage, member management you know, system. On that note, I would like to call on our Reverend uh, Sam Sarkodier uh, to give us a closing prayer uh, before we all dispatch you know, from this virtual launch today. Thank you very much. And may God bless all of you for your time. Thank you very much, my brother. And God bless you and uh, my brother Kofi Tonto for the good work that you've done. Uh, with that being said, we'd like to end with a prayer as we started. If you so wish and you are comfortable, you can close your eyes. You don't have to, as your faith determines. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? We are grateful to you, Almighty God, for the gift of life, wisdom, and knowledge. May this day of the demonstration of the power and the skill of creativity and innovation remind us of your love for mankind, created in your own image and the source of all creation. We pray for our president, His Excellency Nana Dedanko Akufado and his cabinet, especially the vice president, His Excellency Alaji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and his team, who is championing the Ghana digital space, our judiciary and our members of parliament. As the Holy Book says, Lord, in Proverbs 22, verse 29, do you see a man skilled in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand be before obscure men. It is my prayer that Lord this day, as we have launched this member platform for NPP USA. May our party and then NPP USA branch and the diaspora be favored before kings. May our dear honorable chair lady Obaya from Pong be favored and her executives. Father grant them wisdom and the favor to stand before kings and queens. Our IT team Lord and the entire NPP USA. May we receive the blessing of your favor to continuously increase and innovate to impact our party and the entire country towards development. It is my prayer that Lord you shall continuously bless all those that made it possible to participate, our guest speakers, and especially our keynote speaker. We thank you for the skill and the works and the hands that you have blessed to create this and that will maintain and administer this. May it be used purposely further for the growth of our branch and transcend beyond the borders of the United States. We thank you, Abba Father, we thank you, Son, and we thank you, Holy Ghost. We are humbled to continuously say, the battle remains you, Lord, and we depend on you for victory come 2024. You have said it and you will do it in the name of the Almighty Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Shall us and say amen. 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 Thank you very much, you very Reverend Samsa Kodier, our able chairman of Colomo's you know, uh, chapter. Uh, we're so grateful to you. Um, I just got a word that our IT team uh, will still be available to answer questions to some of you who still may have you know, outstanding questions. Please send them through the chat. They will be taking a look at that to respond to messages that or questions that you have. So please make note of that and do not hesitate to reach out if you need to talk to one of the IT uh, personnel directly as well. On that note, we say, may the Lord keep you all safe wherever you are. 
And please, we'll meet another time once again to continue to do the bidding of NPP USA and our party. God bless you all. Thank you and have a good night.